patient if there are technical issues. Public comment will be via telephone only. To speak during any of the public comment opportunities, please call 877-853-5247 or one of the other published numbers. And then you'll enter meeting ID eight, um, sorry, 978-3155-2451. This information is also available on the published agenda, in the public notices section of the city website, and on the broadcast of this meeting on CTN Channel 16, AT&T Channel 99, and online at a2gov.org slash watch CTN, where you will select the government channel. Item number two is the roll call. Good evening, Commission. Uh, Commissioner Mills. Here. Commissioner Milstein? Here. Commissioner Gibrandel? Here. Commissioner Sove? Here. Commissioner Abrams? Here. Commissioner Hammerschmidt? Here. Commissioner Dish? Here. Uh, we have a quorum. Um, I would note that uh, because we have currently have two vacancies, uh, we do um, uh, six affirmative votes are required to advance any land use petition. Very good. Thank you very much. And item number three is introductions, and it looks like we need to introduce uh, Council Member Dish. Welcome to Planning Commission. Um, it's good to have you. You've got a full agenda for your first meeting, so uh, trial by fire. We just throw you right in. Do you want to give a short introduction of yourself to those of you who, those of us who might not be in your, uh, in your district? Sure. Oh, we're in your ward. Uh huh. So I, I represent. Uh, I just now started representing Ward One, and uh, I've lived in Ann Arbor for about twelve years, and I uh, I have always had a thing for urban planning, and so it really really excites me to get to do this. Um, I'm a political science professor at the university, and I care a lot about. Um, I, I care a lot about the things that we can do with policy tools to envision a new city. And this is the commission to do that on. And um, I miss seeing Shannon in the pool. <laughs> Commissioner Gib Randall, I should say, uh, at the Y. You'll see that we're a mix of formal and informal. So welcome, welcome to the bunch. Um, I'm not sure that we'll put you on the spot, uh, but usually, just so you know, item five is when we call on you to report out what happened at your first me meeting last night. But first, we'll go to item number four, um, which is approval of the agenda. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda? Moved by Commissioner Milstein, seconded by Commissioner Sauve. Is there any discussion on the motion? All in favor of the agenda as drafted, please say aye or raise your hand. Hi. Hi. That is everybody. None opposed. So the motion carries. Item number five is the, oh, sorry, it wasn't item number five. It's item number six. Item number five is minutes of the previous meeting. Um, we had November 4th in 2020 uh, minutes in the packet. Can I have a motion to approve the minutes? Moved by Commissioner Milstein, seconded by Commissioner Sauve. Any discussion or corrections of the minutes? All in favor of the motion, please raise your hand or say yes. Aye. Yes. yes. Excellent. That was everyone. Um, so the motion carries. Item number six is reports from city administration, city council, planning manager, planning commission officers and committees, and written communications. Uh, first up, Council Member Tish, do you have any reports? I do have one report, and Mr. Leonard will do the other item. So City Council passed two things that are of importance to Planning Commission. And the one that I'm especially happy about, um, given that it is, uh, it, 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 it's a great way to honor my predecessor, Zach Ackerman, um, who I am not going to fill his shoes, but I'm really honored to replace him. Uh, we passed a resolution to create a transit supported development district um, with a goal of increasing housing density and uh, options along major corridors. And we request that Planning Commission develop additional public engagement opportunities, both educational in nature and designed to solicit feedback um, 
but we don't, I, I believe, and Mr. Leonard can correct me if I'm misunderstanding, I don't think that we mean to make this a large scale, all out, hire a consultant kind of thing. Um, I think that, you know, uh, webinars would be nice and something that we uh, council members need to do ourselves is to figure out how to get, how to hear from people who are not just the usual suspects. Um, not that we don't value the citizens who show up because we do, but there are many people who don't show up regularly to meetings and, and on a change like this um, to the city, it would be really great to have a very broad perspective of people uh, represented in those discussions. So, uh, and I'm happy to be amended in any way that I left out by Mr. Leonard. Um. Thank you, uh, Commissioner Dish. Um, <clears throat> I would just add that part of that discussion was a bit of, I would say, um, um, just a lot of discussion about the interplay of the master plan and implementation of the master plan. So there was a fair amount of discussion about, um, you know, those components for a master plan that reference transit-oriented zoning, um, sort of more generally, for, and those that uh, are more specific. So there was a bit of dialogue on that, um, but. I think the shared goal was to investigate a lot of the things that are already on planning commission's um, mind as it relates to starting this community conversation. Um, and then a couple other um, tidbits from that agenda. One, uh, first reading of the two solar related uh, ordinance amendments where it was passed. Um, that is the proposed height exception for flat roofs to install a roof mounted solar. And then also a solar accessory structures um, on non-residential properties when they're covering existing impervious surfaces. So both, both of those received uh, approval on first reading. Um, they'll go to second reading and public hearing on December 24th. First, I believe. And then the last uh, small item on that agenda was uh, sharing your adopted work program with the city council. So that was uh, appeared on that council agenda as well. Very good. Any other um, planning commissioner officers or those who sit on committees that want to report out from anything that happened in the last two weeks with those subcommittees? we had any meetings um, the within this is also written communications and you may have noticed that there were six different packets plus the comments from the the e comments that were provided um, we used it as an opportunity for second grade math so there are 66 pages of comments if you care um, we did a little addition there uh, next item is audience participation this is an opportunity for persons to speak up for up to three minutes about an issue that is not listed as a public hearing on the agenda so this is not the time to talk about the near north at 700 north main project about the self-storage office bank that's on stadium or about the residential development proposed at 2111 packard there will be public hearings for those later on this is for other items. Um, to comment on the, any other matters, please call 877-853-5247 and enter meeting ID 978-3155-2451. City staff will select callers that have raised their hand digitally. Um, you can raise your hand by pressing star nine on your phone. Mr. Leonard will, um, uh, make the necessary changes to promote you and you'll get an automated message that you have been unmuted. Um, you may need to still unmute on your side of the telephone. And when you do, please move to a quiet area and mute any background noise so that we can hear you clearly. Also, uh, please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments. And it looks like we do have a hand raised. Caller with a phone number ending with 534. You have up to three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Thank you, good evening. This is Tom Stolberg. I live at 1202 Traver Street. Uh, I was watching the council meeting last night and I did speak. Um, something that I'm in favor of transit-oriented development in general. Um, I think it's important to point out that we do not have the type of transit to support a full transit-oriented development. Uh, which is perhaps why it's titled something else, Transit Supported Development District. Uh, I think it's important to note some of the reasons that transit-oriented development works where it does work uh, 
is that it has nodes or hubs of activity uh, centered around transit stations. So we're not going to have that. Uh, I am a little bit concerned about spreading this anywhere up and down the transit corridor uh, because you have an ecosystem that isn't complete if you do that. Uh, say reducing or eliminating parking works well when you have a mixed use center around a transit station, but um, when you just have a single building anywhere up and down a corridor uh, where you reduce or eliminate the parking, you may just be offloading the burden of the parking from that development onto neighbors and neighboring streets. So I hope that you will take a look at that and that consideration uh, when you design this um, as instructed by council. The other thing that's missing, in my opinion, uh, in council's direction to you, that I hope you have the discretion to add in, or at least add in as, as part of the conversation, is the, uh, the reliance on indirect causes for affordability and sustainability, essentially trickle down theories, which I personally don't believe in and as almost 30 years in the real estate business, I think I have some experience to uh, to speak on uh, with that. Um, so why not bake those directly in? Uh, we do it in our premiums ordinance. We do it with our PUD ordinance. And you're in the process of revising the plan project ordinance to, to do that directly, uh, which is a really good move. The plan project uh, ordinance that we have on the books now uh, is troubled. Uh, for those of you who don't know, that that was one of the things that was mentioned in the lower town lawsuit. Um, that was never resolved one way or another as part of the lawsuit, but we had great concerns about the uh, actual legality of the plan project uh, ordinance as it stands in our books. So we were very happy that you took that up and we're revising that and very happy that you're taking it, you know, out some of the arbitrariness and the, the discretion uh, that makes more it seconds. arbitrary and putting in some very specific items and measurements and putting in that, uh, you know, if you want something, changed in your development, say like reduce setbacks, that there's a trade-off and that could be sustainability or affordability. So I'm looking forward to having that discussion later on from uh, one of the items on the public hearing in terms of the plan project modification and lack of trade-offs. Thank you. Thank you very much. If there's anyone else who's dialed in that wants to talk, um, that would like to address the Planning Commission on an item that is not listed as a public hearing, so that's not the project on North Main, West Stadium, or on Packard. If there's anything else you'd like to address, you can pr press star nine to raise your hand and we can call on you. All right, seeing none, I will close the public hearing, the audience participation section, not public hearing yet, um, and there, in case you're interested, there is another opportunity for audience participation at uh, the end of the meeting. Item number eight is the public hearings for the next business meeting. Yes, we have one new public hearing currently scheduled for the December 1st, 2020 uh, Planning Commission meeting. Uh, that is Maine and Davis Apartments. It is located at 907 to 913 South Main Street. It is a site plan for city council approval, a proposal to combine 907 and 913 South Main Street, demolish the existing structures, and construct a six unit, 35 bedroom rental complex on a 0.32 acre site zoned R4C. Very good. Commissioner Abrams, I saw your hand raised. Sorry, go ahead. Oh, sorry, this is out of turn. I just. Um... I noticed in the for the communications that there are now nine packets in addition to the e comments. So I wanted to make sure people went and grabbed those. Excellent. Thank you. Those must have been added at very end. Great. Thank you very much for pointing that out. Um, all right. We are on to item number nine A, the regular business. This is the Near North Townhomes rezoning and site plan for city council approval with plan project modifications. This is at 700 North Main Street. Um, as is our usual practice, we'll start with the petitioner presentation, um, then have staff fill in for us, and then we'll have the public hearing. And again, as is the practice, uh, we'll take the entire petition, which includes the rezoning and site plan together for the public hearing. And I'm just in the process of um, having everybody join the meeting. Give me one moment. 
minute here. Alexis, do you know who from the project team will be providing the presentation? We still can't hear you, Alexis. Nope. Alexis is unusually quiet this evening. I don't know if she needs to plug in her headphones. All right. Is that it? Yes. Got it. Never the same setting twice. Um, I believe um, I was going to say, I think the presenter will be Ryan Biskner from Powell Associates, but I see Michael Powell. So um, that is my, I believe it's going to be Michael Powell. Brian Biskner has his hand raised. There I am. There Very good. Brian, would you be running the PowerPoint? Um, I won't be. Uh, I believe uh, Alexis says I won't have control of documents. OK. You want to do that, Alexis? Um, I can if you enable screen sharing. And Alexis, if you could go to uh, just let's look at sheet S3 of the site plan submittal. First off, um, our, is my screen? No, it's not. Okay. All right, um, S3 you requested? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Um, first, I, I, want to, uh, uh, I want to start by saying uh, thank you, uh, Planning Commission, for seeing us. We want to thank the staff, especially Alexis, uh, for sure, with with uh, her enormous help, uh, Amy Ponsack and Jerry Hancock to get us to this point. Um, obviously, with the floodplain and the floodway, and um, um, we definitely uh, we we had a lot of communication with Jerry to get to get here. However, uh, we are asking that uh, after my presentation and the public hearing uh, to get input uh, from input and comments from the Planning Commission, but we would like to postpone or table till the next meeting. Uh, we received a letter from the uh, adjacent neighbors, and uh, we, we did have two, two citizen participation meetings with them, but the owner wants to take an opportunity to meet with them and go over some of their concerns. We, we were a little surprised by that letter today. So I'll give my presentation, and uh, we look forward to uh, the, the, the Planning Commission's uh, comments, and then we'll get into a more detailed discussion uh, next time around. So uh, uh, looking at sheet S3, we have uh, uh, 22 units uh, proposed upland of the floodplain. Oh, thank you, Alexis. Uh, they are, uh, with, with a garage underneath, underneath. they are uh, two-story with a dormer on top, and uh, all parking for the units will be contained underneath uh, the uh, structure in the garages. And um, the uh, uh, any uh, any excess parking will be taken care of uh, by the um, pervious pavers in the floodplain area. Um, uh, that would be for visitors and and deliveries or anything like that. Um, uh, moving uh, counterclockwise around the site, we have a we have a retaining wall uh, along the north line that is to help. Uh, preserve the existing trees that are there uh, that uh, as part of a uh, request by uh, the owners uh, of the adjacent properties. And then uh, as we move, uh, continue along, we see our uh, detention tank there. That's where we'll be storing our stormwater and uh, our 
some of that's the there there we go thing it's really hard to not point uh uh while i'm talking uh and the, the detention tank will be will be um uh, connected to the uh the sewer storm sewer and the road right away and we made that connection via that bioswale there as it moves counterclockwise along uh the property the bioswale uh, uh, uh provides two uh uses it's to drain the detention tank and we're also creating a depression there as our uh, um, floodplain fill mitigation. Um, the parking area, uh, the sanitation turnaround uh, in that area right there in the entrance, that's all a previous paver material uh, that's, that's meant to uh, mimic the existing conditions uh, that's, that it can percolate into the ground or it is connected to the bioswale and and it can exit the site via the bioswale and storm sewer as well. Um, due to our interactions with MDOT, we have a uh, uh, right turn in, right turn out, um, as we call it there in the center of that little island is a pork chop uh, to, that was a request by them to help mitigate traffic. We've had the proper traffic studies. That's a minor amount of traffic. Um, uh, there by MDOT and, and the city of Ann Arbor. Um, so the, um, and if you could, uh, Alexis, could we switch down, go down to sheets towards the end, the architecture. A-0, A-1. A and uh, we'll just kind of get a look at the outside of the building a-1 and then let's stop on A-2 when you get there. Okay, right there. That's good. Thank you. I wanted to uh, uh, talk about this for a moment because uh, uh, we wanted to, one of the unique features of the, of the building is that the uh, the residents will park underneath the units and they will enter through uh, the garage area or they could go up some outdoor stairs on the north side of the building and they will um, move through the that middle area with the with the plantings there that they will that will be the main entrance into their building and that it acts as a courtyard it's open to the air it's not covered um, and that and that keeps the the activity of the residents in, uh, screened from the uh, residents to the east by no courtyard or anything like or, or, or entrances or, or decks out on the east side. And so this is kind of a unique feature. This hangs above the the garage area, and it will actually drain down into the garage area. Um, and so that's the ma main entrance for the units. Um, uh, due to the uh, city's desire to have uh, entrances on Main Street. Uh, we, we will have entrances for those uh, uh, westerly buildings on Main Street that have a connection to the sidewalk. Um, but the, uh, the units to the east or the top of the page, they will enter through the garage or through that um, elevated uh, deck area there, I guess, if you want to call it, uh, in the middle. Um, and uh, that, that concludes my short presentation. Uh, we look forward to any comments or questions that the Planning Commission has. And hearing from the residents, of course. Thank you very much. Um, Alexis, do you have anything to add? And you have to unmute yourself because I hit the mute button during that. Um, I can give a... a, a I'll give a short staff analysis. Um, uh, I do have um, our brief uh, staff present presentation um, with the um, aerial photo. I I'll go through it very briefly um, for the benefit. I know that there's going to be there's going to be a public hearing. As the petitioner mentioned, um, they are requesting it that to it be postponed this evening. Um, so I would encourage the commissioners. Um, for any specific questions or concerns you might have or something that you may be looking for, a uh, revision you may be looking for, 
to uh, share that now this evening so that they can incorporate it. But this will be coming back to you, uh, if tabled, this will be coming back to you for a more in-depth discussion. Nevertheless, uh, let me get some, um, some background highlights and some of our staff analysis. Um, it is a 1.2 acre site currently zoned PUD. The petition is to uh, two petitions, one to rezone from PUD to R4C, multifamily dwelling, and then the site plan to develop the 22 townhomes. I think um, uh, Brian Bissner did a great job going through the site plan aspect of it. Um, the um, master plan recommendation for the site is actually for continued single and two fam, oh, I'm sorry, is not for continued, but recommends single and two family residential uses for this site. Um, I did in the staff report note, there's a couple of changes since that staff report uh, recommendation was made and it was um, um, re reiterated in our adoption of the combined master plan. Um, some changes are that um, the single family homes that were present on the site have since been removed. Some of those is not, is not a bad thing. Uh, they were in the floodplain and the floodway, but others were uphill. The site, um, actually the lower part of the site is in the floodplain, as Brian mentioned, the upper part is not. Um, <clears throat> the staff report goes through the standards of approval for a rezoning. The petitioner has also provided their petition um, and they have addressed some questions. The questions are not the standards of approval, but we ask them of an applicant to help you make your um, decision. It was staff's evaluation that the uh, proposed rezoning from PUD to R4C um, is moving in the direction of the master plan recommendation. Um, the, the R4C district allows single and two family uses and also the proposed development is for attached single family units. Um, this is um, more in keeping with the master plan recommendation and specifically in this case we think it's appropriate to um, rezone to multifamily because it allows for that attached um, single family homes better enabling to provide the, the density reasonable density on the site outside of the floodplain and floodway. Um, the site plan comes with a few planned project modifications those that is a tool in the UDC that allows the site plan to flex either height or setbacks only if the project then provides certain public benefits the public benefits are predefined in the UDC the um let me screen share for a second the Hope this works quickly. Here we go. Uh, here's the site plan again. The plan project modifications are for a reduced uh, south side setback and east rear setback. Um, also, there's a plan project modification for increased height. The south side setback standard in R4C is 12 feet and then there's a formula additional setback is required based on the depth of a building. The proposed setback is 15 feet which is less than the uh, total amount required but more than the base amount and the 15 feet is consistent with a, the required conflicting land use buffer. On the rear the setback is proposed at 22 feet in this um, orientation this south east corner is 22 feet and it increases as you move north because of the irregular or the not parallel lot line this uh, the normal setback in rear setback in the r4c district is 30 feet and then again there's a formula for increased um, so many inches per feet based on the width of a building the proposed setback is less than the standard, but is still more than a conflicting land use buffer. And as it approaches the uh, north side, the setback um, does meet the, 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 the normal code requirements. The increased height, uh, 30 feet, is the standard in the R4C district. 32 um, and a half feet, I believe, is what the petitioner has, um, has requested. 
and this is to allow the parking underneath the building. I have noted in the staff report that other R4 zoning districts, but not the R4C, but other R4 districts allow a 10 foot height increase when there is parking underneath the building. So this application is to be consistent with other R4 um, districts. Um, the, um, proposed, the site plan does impact natural features. Um, there are a few landmark trees that will be removed and there is some cut and fill to the floodplain. Therefore, they have provided an alternatives analysis in the staff report. The proposed layout um, is the one that minimizes the disturbance to the sum total of natural features the least. Um, there, I've just quickly gone through the, and I believe I've hit all the highlights from the staff report. Um, staff what is prepared to recommend approval because it meets the because the rezoning is consistent with the master plan and the uh, site plan meets, um, I'm sorry, the site plan does meet the standards of approval and all the dimensional and development requirements, but the applicant has requested um, it be uh, postponed. I am here to uh, answer any questions that you might have. Um, I have a few additional graphics if need be, but I will pause right now and just let it go. Thank you. Very good, thank you very much. Um, we'll open the public hearing for this item. Um, this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the proposed near north townhomes development um, site plan and rezoning petition. Uh, public comment can be made by calling 877-853-5247 and then entering meeting ID 978-3155-2451. Uh, city staff will call in those who have raised their hand by pressing star nine um, and uh, you'll be called upon by the last three digits of your telephone number. Again, please move to a quiet area when um, it's your turn to speak and mute any television or other background sounds so that we can hear you more clearly. If you can also please state your name and address for the record. Um, looks like we do have one person on who has their hand up, a couple now. So. We'll take you in turn, folks. Uh, caller with a phone number ending with 321. You have up to three minutes to address the Planning Commission. You may need to unmute your phone on your end, which I think is star six. Star six. Caller with a phone number ending with the numbers 321. Please unmute your phone and you have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Let's try. Caller with a phone number ending with the numbers 134. Um, you have up to three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Thanks, Mr. Leonard. This is Ken Garber, 28 Haverhill Court. Um, hopefully caller 321 will get a chance to speak after Give me. Um, anyway, uh, first I'd like to welcome Council Member Dish to this commission. I'm really excited to see you here. Um, okay, uh, 700 North Main. More downtown housing is obviously desirable, especially on this site, which is currently vacant. It's a problematic site for building due to the floodplain, um, but the petitioner found a viable solution with reasonable density. But my comments tonight, as usual, are about the sustainability elements of this plan. I see none here. In general, I don't think we should approve rezonings for market rate housing in Ann Arbor without some significant sustainable element. The most urgent one is building electrification since solar panels can usually be added later, but HVAC systems are effectively permanent given the cost of retrofitting. In this case, presumably from a forced air gas furnace system with extensive duct work to a ductless heat pump system. Um, it's never going to happen. These townhomes will be burning gas for 50 years or more. 
Keep in mind that building electrification and new construction is now official city policy. As you know, strategy two, action one of the A20 carbon neutrality plan states that, quote, all new residential and commercial buildings are designed and built to operate without the use of natural gas, reducing the increased costs associated with retrofitting existing systems, end quote. Plus, we now have the Valhalla Glen and Viridian precedents to show it's economically feasible, assuming ground up construction and a tight building envelope. We don't have the enforcement tools yet to mandate this for all new construction, but petitioners like this one should be asked to incorporate heat pump, HVAC systems, or VRF systems for larger buildings. Many times I've brought up building electrification at Planning Commission, and I apologize for doing it again, because this really isn't a zoning or site plan issue. Instead, it could and should already be part of our city building code, as it is for many cities now. Contrary to common wisdom, that is entirely consistent with Michigan law. But because we don't have it in our building code, it falls to staff and planning commission to defend our community values. That's especially true for rezoning PUD and project position, petitions, since these are not by right developments. Um, commission has taken my concerns seriously in the past, and I'm grateful for that. This commission has more collective expertise than I can even grasp, not to mention incredible stamina at meetings like this. But these projects with fossil fuels keep coming through, so I'll keep bringing the issue up until we amend our building code to make it moot or until someone convinces me that I shouldn't care about it. Um, and believe it or not, I find public speaking really hard. Thanks for indulging this. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr. Garber. There's a couple more hands. Hello, Mr. Stolberg. You have three minutes to address the planning commission. Yes. Thank you. It's Tom Stolberg again. I do live at 1202 Traver Street. Tonight I am uh, representing the properties at 110 East Summit Street and 112 East Summit, East Summit Street. I'm a manager in the LLCs that owns those properties. So I am a neighboring property owner to the north. I did attend the uh, community presentation at Forsyth, which I think might be almost two years ago now. Uh, I have not heard from the developers since then, and there are changes that I've not been aware of. Uh, I know they're you know published publicly and have been able to look at them. Uh, I would appreciate if the developer, uh, since the developer's tabling this, I'd appreciate if we could have a conversation about some of the drainage issues. I have enormous faith in our uh, Jerry Hancock at the city, so I'm not concerned about the stormwater drainage, but I would sure like to know from the developer uh, some of the updates that have been made there that impact us directly. Moving on to the rest of the development, uh, to Ken Garber, who just spoke, uh, never apologize, Ken. You're asking the right questions, you're asking the right thing of their city. We have made very specific declarations about affordable housing and sustainability, and if we're serious about meeting those goals, then we need to be bringing that up every single time a project comes up. This is not a buy right project. It's a plan project modification. Those are variances. The developer is not entitled automatically to those. And given what we've asked our citizens to do through a millage to support affordable housing, I do not see why we are not asking our developers to kick in their fair share as well towards affordable housing and or sustainability. And that goes back to the plan project modifications, which I've been following at the Ordinance Revision Committee. And, and I like what you're doing. And I know that's not uh, come through the pipeline and made it all the way uh, to council and into our ordinance yet. But those are really good concepts. And right here we have discretion because they're asking for a plan project modification. Uh, so use your discretion and let's make sure we deal with affordable housing and sustainability when we evaluate these projects. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. 
Again, if you're on the line and wish to address the Planning Commission on this pub for this public hearing, you can press star nine to digitally raise your hand. Call with the phone number ending with 347. 347. You can unmute your phone. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Caller with the phone number ending with 347. 347. If you can unmute your phone, you have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. You may need to press star six. There we go. Caller ending in 347. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Oh, remuted. Try star six one more time. There you go. Hello. Hello. My name is Christine Crockett and I live in this neighborhood in an R4C neighborhood. I live on Kingsley Street. Ever since this piece of property has been up for debate on new development, which has been for over two years, I have been involved with the developers and their discussions. There have been several different developers. This recent one had meetings about two years ago, and I attended that meeting at Forsyth. There have been vast changes in this project since that time, and I was never notice, notified, even though I was at that original Forsyth meeting. The current project before you is one that is twice the size of the project that I saw at Forsyth. That project was proposed as a PUD. A PUD requires the developer to give a proven community benefit, and it also requires that there be a contribution to the affordable housing fund. Now this comes back to us, a project that is twice as big, and yet it's no longer a PUD, but it's R4C. This, if I've ever seen anything that should be a PUD, this project is it. These developers need to develop, need to contribute to our affordable housing fund. The citizens of Ann Arbor have voted to tax themselves for that fund, and we should ask no less of the developers who are asking to build in our community and to manipulate the zoning in such a way as to hold the developers not responsible for making a contribution to our affordable housing fund is just unacceptable to me as a citizen who always votes and pays higher taxes for the benefit of our community. I also think that this developer, since he's asked to table this, should talk to the stakeholders who have followed this project all along and were also present to that meeting at Forsyth. Um, I think that the changes here are far beyond just R4C. And I think that the Planning Commission should use its better judgment to require this very large, much enlarged development from what, it pre what was pre previously proposed to, to tell the developer that he must pay into our affordable housing fund. Thank you. Thank you very much. It looks like the, should we try the phone number ending in three, two, one, one more time? Yes, caller with the phone number ending with three, two, one. Phone number ending with three, two, one. If you could unmute your phone, you have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. And again, to unmute, you may need to press star six on your phone. All right. If there's anyone else on the line who would like to address the Planning Commission on this item, um, you can press star nine to digitally raise your hand. Seeing no one, I will close the public hearing on this um, and read the proposed motion. 
The Ann Arbor City Planning Commission hereby recommends that the Mayor and City Council approve the Near North rezoning from PUD planned unit development to R4C multiple family dwelling. And the Ann Arbor City Planning Commission hereby recommends that the Mayor and City Council approve the Near North site plan with planned project modifications to A, increase the maximum height from um, to 33 feet 6 inches, B, decrease the south side setback to 15 feet, and C, decrease the rear setback to 22 feet, subject to, one, maintaining 43% open space, two, maintaining 132 feet north side setback, and three, having front doors facing North Main Street, garages underneath, and accessible only from the interior of the site, and development agreement subject to receiving preliminary approval from the Washtenaw County Water Resources Commissioner and addressing outstanding engineering comments prior to scheduling a public hearing of the City Council. Uh, those motions, are, can I have a motion to move them by Commissioner Sovey, seconded by Commissioner Milstein. You guys are quick on the draw tonight. Um, we are in discussion again i think because the petitioner requested postponement giving any um, outstanding issues that you think or questions that you have that they might address next time would be most helpful in this anyone have anything that they'd like more information on for next time around commissioner milstein oh that's Thank you. Other, go ahead yep, go ahead I was just going to say to uh, Commissioner Dish, this was typically Commissioner Ackerman's job, uh, was to offer the kind of the first comment. So you didn't know that you were uh, filling in. <laughs> it was it was just the thing that he tended to do. So you're not filling his shoes, though, as you said. So we'll let Commissioner Milstein take the first comment. <laughs> Although I feel like I've taken over that role in the last uh, couple of meetings. Um, <laughs> So a, a couple of things that I would uh, like additional information on. Um, it'd be really great to get additional uh, renderings of what all sides of the building look like. I had a hard time figuring out the back doors, um, or actually maybe they're the front doors, exactly where they go. Um, so it'd be great to get additional renderings just so I can get a better idea of what the site looks like because I was having a really hard time imagining what the site might be. And with that said, um, uh, I am one that's pretty vocal about brown buildings um, and how we have plenty of them. Um, so if the architect or the, the development team wants to maybe look at some other uh, interesting color schemes um, in that area, I think that would be appropriate. Um, so I'd encourage you to do so. Um, in regards to public participation, um, hearing from uh, some of the written communication that we received as well as hearing from some of the uh, members of the public that spoke today, having a public uh, participation meeting two years ago and then uh, coming to us with something completely different, I shouldn't say completely different, but larger and different in general, um, I would encourage the development team to uh, go through another public participation meeting. Um, I think that feedback will be valuable to us as the planning commission. Um, in particular, it would be very valuable to me just to get more participation from uh, the surrounding neighbors. Um, and then um, just some additional questions that I had. I was having a hard time figuring out where, how, a, uh, how trash was going to be picked up from the site. Um, of exactly where that was going to happen and how that was uh, going to occur. So I'd like some information on that. And then the last thing I was hoping to get some additional information on, because it's been a while since we've seen a, I actually don't remember the last time we saw a building that's all one building phased out the way that it was. So I, I guess I'd like some more information about how the phasing will work. Um, since it's one big building or I, I'm not, and I'm not, just understanding how the phasing is going to work if phase one is going to be built but then the side of the building is going to look like it's cut off exactly how that would work so i'd like that additional information as well so that's it for me and, and if i may uh very quickly um the, yeah the purpose of the tabling was to have that citizen participation meeting we were surprised we were very surprised by that letter because we did we had two with them uh and the the first one in 2016 had 19 units. The next one 
was this side, this building exactly only it had 16 units um, but it was this exact building and the site has hardly changed and then um, this one we did go from 16 to 22 units uh, that is a significant change i'm sure in their eyes so that is certainly the purpose of tabling is to get with them and uh, get their input but we thank you very much for yours and I would just encourage you not just with the immediate neighbors, but to I, the people that you invited to the public hearing at Foresight, um, I would circle back around with all those people um, and do a more in-depth public participation than just the adjacent neighbors. Absolutely. Thank you. Yep. Any other commissioners have comments or questions that the petitioner might bring back with them in the future? Commissioner Gibrandel. Um, two. One is, um, is this compatible with the revised uh, floodplain ordinance or the new floodplain ordinance, I guess, uh, that's that's coming? Um, I'd be curious to know more about that. Um, and then the other is that uh, you are very well set up for solar in terms of the orientation of your roofs. And uh, because, you know, one of your roof planes will be facing south. So um, I would like you to look at that too. Um, you know, our caller was absolutely correct. When we're doing rezonings, this is the time that we are tending to to have developers really look at what's possible with their site. And because of the orientation of your buildings, I think you are well set up for that. Are these for rent or are these um, um, to own? Uh, they're to own. So they're to own. So, kind of um, to sell. yeah. And so, you know, these this helps with people's utility bills. You know, there's a there's a there's a payback with that. Um, so it, it could also be a selling point, I guess mm -hmm. is what I would say. So those are two things that I would be curious to know more about for next time. Okay. Commissioner Abrams. Hi, um, I wanted to just point out a little bit of like some of the detail about the, the plan project modification and make sure that I'm understanding it correctly or need some guidance from staff. So, um, Currently, the, the only thing being provided in exchange for reduced setbacks and increased height is a small increase in open space. Is that correct? No, we're making a contribution to the park. It's, it's in, uh, we're making a contribution of $13,000 to the, uh, Alexis, is that the park fund? Um, yeah, bear with me one second. I scroll through the. Um, I don't see that listed as. Yeah. Part of plan so, modification. Yeah. Um, in the staff report, page yeah. seven. Uh, yeah. Um, so they are proposing a parkland contribution in lieu of an on site um, park facility. Um, but for plan project modifications, um, goes back to the UDC section 531C. And there are um, eight, um, I'm sorry, they're not eight, but there are, um, it provides certain benefits. And I have identified, uh, staff has identified three, hold on, I think I'm confusing myself. <laughs> um, <laughs> I mean, I have you know. the open, I can help right. rattle them off if you'd like. <laughs> yeah, but no, that was, I was correct. So um, page seven and eight, but I've, I felt that this project, um, meets three of the approval standards. Um, it is providing a little bit of excess open space. Um, the north side setback far exceeds the minimum standard. Um, and so that's, a, I feel that it functions as sort of a balance. There's a reduced south side setback, but there's a much greater north side setback. Um, and I think that the arrangement of buildings is um, pedestrian oriented, which is one of the uh, plan project benefits. Um, the buildings do front the street. Um, there are front doors to each um, direct access to the, the front building. Um, and so I believe that it meets that criteria as well. I noted in the staff report that by code, you only need to provide one of those benefits. Um, but I have also note that for this one in particular, the I believe that the total is more than the pieces together with the little bit extra open space, uh, the balancing setbacks and the um, pedestrian orientation of the streetscape, um, that this is a, this 
is a justified and approvable plan project modification um, for the side rear and height. Okay, thank you. I appreciate that clarification. It feels, I mean, just maybe to the petitioner, it feels borderline to me, I suppose, like what the kind of what's being asked in exchange for what's being provided. Like the increase in open space is feels minimal and it's also completely within the interior of the project. It doesn't provide even a kind of visual, you know, um, kind of amenity, let's say, to the pedestrians or, or to the city or to the neighborhood. Um, and I think, you know, as I'm sure you're aware, the kind of two, uh, you know, um, priorities of the city at the moment in terms of, of development are sustainability and affordability. And it's disappointing to me that the project doesn't really address either and sustainability is part of the plan project modification kind of folio of things available too. So um, I think it's just something to consider. Um, and um, my other questions have already been addressed by other commissioners. Thank you. I'm going to chime in here because I would do more than consider it. I, um, think that the open space and the north side setback, you are on a site that has floodplain that you can't build in. And so it is out of necessity. <laughs> um, it's, it seems to me that some of that space is just not usable. Um, it's not, so I would, I would push a little bit harder than what Commissioner Abrams just did um, and say that um, I, I do think that there's a benefit on having um, uh, you know, front doors on Main Street, regardless of, you know, how tall the building is, we would be asking you for that. Um, and so I think, uh, and honestly, my hope is that the people that are living in your units want to go out that front door and walk up Main Street to get to the things in Carytown and on Main Street, rather than walk out the back door that's between the buildings anyway, um, or between the units anyway. So I, so I think that that's not, it's a, it's a public good, but I also think it's definitely a, a private good as well. Um, and so uh, I know that our site plan or our plan project modifications have not been passed yet, but we've discussed them many times. And so thinking through the list of the things on there that might be possible. And if I could ask staff to, again, I know it's not finalized, it's not gone through, but thinking about how some of these things the shifting of setbacks kind of as a comparison of the things that we were talking about there's some types of modifications that um, are seen as as lower bars than others um, i think the comparison of that and how like where the where where we stand right now on the plan project modifications and how this stacks up would be really um th that's something that i would really like to see from staff next time um, the other thing that I just didn't uh, see and we didn't hear about, but uh, the EV ordinance, I'm curious about the parking. I wanna note that you exceed significantly the amount of parking that is um, required. And, um, and because it's under the most of it, not all of it, because there is the kind of guest parking to the north end, but because most of it's under the building, I, you know, Okay, but that's that's the choice. But we do have uh, um, the EV ordinance is also going forward to so to just in the presentation next time pointing out like how you're dealing with EV charging um, would be uh, something that I'd like to see. Um, and I feel like there was one more change that's kind of in the hopper that and because there's a lot of these things that are kind of in the hopper and it has escaped me because I didn't write it down, but maybe it'll come back to me. Um, so those are the those are the key questions that I had for now. So Eve, let me just understand EV uh, quickly. Um, you'd like to see EV uh, some of the units themselves uh, uh, be uh, be wired for EV, uh, as well as possibly uh, some of the guest parking or whatever uh, outside one or both, or it, it, do you prefer either one? So there's an ordinance that past planning commission that is um, that is to go before city council that's right the right status right 
Um, and so again, I'm not sure how the sequencing works. If that actually gets approved before you do, I think that you have to meet it. So recognizing that, I'm, you may well want to then think about how much parking you provide. Um, because effectively, there it's a multiplier. If you if you build it based on what you know, what is the use of that facility? There's a different multiplier about how many of your part, what percentage of your parking spots need to be pre-wired? How many you actually need to have chargers for? How many you just have to lay the conduit for? And because it's underground, it you know, effectively the the whole purpose of this is that your infrastructure is going to last for some time, and we are we have a citywide goal of carbon neutrality and so in order for that to work we got to electrify our vehicles um and so if you're going to build it build it to be future proofed effectively so i just pointed out because um i recognize that given how many parking spaces you have especially that exceed what the minimums are there may there may be implications on that so i just want to make sure that you're aware of that um we will, we will consult that ordinance that, that's the perfect we will look at that Gotcha. Perfect. And I now I now that we're thinking about this, I was thinking about the other ordinances that are in the hopper and the other one that's that's related to this was already mentioned, which is the um, floodplain ordinance. So just kind of showing that on the map. And I think being uh, it's probably it's buried in the um, documents, I'm sure somewhere. But to the to the point about the you know, what percentage of the property effectively is is falls into that, I think would help evaluate to what extent the, you know, 3% extra land area that's open space is, I think that that would help me at least. And I, I, I mean, I, even so, I would still encourage you to look at the changes that are in the hopper for the plan pro project, project modifications, some of which are sustainability, some of which are affordability effectively, you don't have to do it all, um, but that would um, make me much more comfortable saying, yes, this is, this is, um, uh, uh, it meets those thresholds. Understood. Any other commissioners who have questions or comments? Um, Commissioner Sove. Alexis, I think you mentioned uh, height would have met for R4, not R4C. Is there a reason, like what other things made it go to R4C instead of R4? Oh, well, um, there, there's R4A, B, C, yeah. D, and E. A, B, and D, um, whatever their base uh, height, uh, maximum height is, and they vary, but whatever it is, they, you can uh, increase it by 10 feet if you put parking under roughly half of the building. But there is no such um, flexibility in R4C. I one just wanted to point out that what they're asking in terms of a little bit of height increase when they have um, parking underneath the building is actually not unheard of. It's not completely outside of the realm. Other zoning districts, which I, I don't think are appropriate for this location, um, uh, but other zoning districts, other R4s, the A, B, and D, already offer the exact thing that they're asking for through plan project. Is there a reason C doesn't? Um, to be very honest, R4C is like the third rail. Um, and when we added the, when we did some modifications to the other zoning districts, uh, but I wanna uh, 10 to 12 years ago, we left, uh, we left many things about the R4C alone. And we, we did start to tackle it on its own, but we that has it has not gone far or fast okay i'm just trying to like reconcile the plan project issues and what we're looking because i think there's three ordinances that are currently in the pipeline that aren't applied to this project but i appreciate uh petitioners saying i want to postpone because i want to have these conversations with the community uh and i think all of these um pipeline ordinance changes are conversations about community values. So the more that you can integrate them into the project, which are the EV charging stations, the updates to the plan project, which if we eliminate the, the small modification to height because R4C is weird, we're talking about shifting the setbacks 
And you can do that with either sustainability or affordability, which we heard from the speakers um, as a priority and I think from this body. Um, and the third EV plan projects. Floodplain. 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 So thank you. Those, I think, look, talking to staff about those three and what changes would look like on this project, I think would be valuable in, in the long term. And I think you'd get a lot more support when meeting those more uh, future thinking metrics because we're updating those ordinances when we can't update. We're kind of stalled on master planning and we're trying to finesse some of these things. So I think if, if, you, if we look at those three things, I'd like to have a discussion about around how those are applied, even though not adopted in this project. That would be my Yeah, point. we'll have that for you when they're ready to come back. That's great. Thank you. Commissioner Gibrandel. One other thing on the floodplain, and that is um, if you could also, um, I know that some of the FEMA maps are going to be redrawn in this area based on the tunnel. And I, I, I don't think they're likely done at this point, but it would be interesting to get Mr. Hancock's opinion about whether this parcel would be affected by that change or not. And um, I know that would be more of a gut check on, on his end um, because they haven't been officially redrawn, but I'd just be curious to know if um, if he feels like that would shift much based on um, the remapping that's going to be happening. Yeah, I'll have a statement from, from him. Um, I can tell you though that he is well aware. I think he knows what uh, he has the anticipated impact, which will benefit this property. I think they're actually going to free up much buildable area. But for this project, it was a timing issue. Um, it will be a couple years before the FEMA maps are done. They need to collect data. Um, um, so th this project should comply either way because it is more conservative in that aspect. However, I'll get Jerry uh, Hancock's official, I'll get a statement from him. That would be great, thank you. If I, if I may, uh, we, we had a lot of, of conversation and input with Jerry and uh, we are where we are at uh, due to the current floodplain and floodway lines. But the floodplain line is going to move away from our building to the north because it's going to lessen just a little. The flood uh, floodway will probably not change hardly. But we, uh, Jerry, just two weeks ago, we we were talking about this is what we you can do this now, and then we can look at a site plan amendment later, maybe depending on that new line. But so we've had an enormous amount of help and input from him. So yeah, absolutely. A statement from him is welcome. Commissioner Dish and then Commissioner Hammerschmidt. So I am not sure if this is the appropriate place to raise this question, but actually I'm confused by some of the public comment and what I read in the packet. And I'm confused because my understanding was that this site was zoned PUD for a failed multi-use uh, 50 unit tower plus office space. I did not understand from the packet that this particular project was ever intended to come forward as a PUD. So I am correct in that. Okay, thank you. Then, uh, okay. Uh, there, there was there was a, uh, um, a commenter, uh, Ms. Crockett said that she thought it should be a PUD, um, but the petition before you is not for a revised PUD. It is for rezoning to a conventional district. Yep, I understand that. And I just she I felt that she had implied that the first at the first meeting when she first saw this project, it came forward as a smaller project and a PUD, which that didn't comport with my understanding. So I made a note for myself to double check that initial history. Um, oh, I, I made it and I made a note for myself to double check. Yep. Yeah, okay, you heard that too. So I guess just the only thing that I'm a little bit wary about is um, when we make something a by right, you know, when we when we zone something so that a project becomes a by right project, it is not wrong to say that we're giving up leverage. And so I would like to underscore 
everything that all of you who have way more experience and I'll get there, but it's going to be a little while. I'd like to underscore everything that you've said about um, looking to these future oriented metrics and revising this project as if it were perhaps following or, or adding a little adding a little bit more to this project as if it were follow it, following, excuse me, falling under them already. Because when you look at what the petitioner is asking for, it's not very much. It's way less height than they could get if they weren't in R4C and they had their parking underground. Um, it's an offsetting setback, not really a very big deal. So they're not asking very much and we haven't really asked for very much in return, except what we're giving is this big benefit. This will be a buy right development. And so I think it is appropriate to try to raise what we're asking from the planned projects standards, because it did catch my eye in the staff report that these are three kind of smallish things that add up to enough. And I'm, I'm feeling a little wary about whether we're actually, it, it's enough better, in fact, to qualify under the planned projects. Commissioner Hammerschmidt. Thank you. Um, I'll try to be quick. Um, one thing was sort of related to the public participation. I'm glad that you're doing another meeting. I was also a little confused by the, uh, the comments that I heard. And then I went back to look at the, the notes from the meeting too. And I noticed the notes that are linked in the staff report are from the meeting in 2016, not the 2018. So I don't know what happened at that 2018 meeting. It would be good, I think. I'm, again, I'm glad you're meeting with them again. I'm hoping that that you know, that'll address a lot of the questions that came up. I wonder if though, when you prepare the, the um, like a report from that public participation meeting, could you add in there like what really did change from 2018, just so we can make sure that we understand where some of those concerns were coming from. And also maybe we could even get the notes from that 2018 meeting. And if, and if I may, uh, I have that plan. It's in, I, I can show you right now if, if you like, um, uh, uh, Alexis has that, uh, that was the second PDF I sent you. The 2018 plan is 95, I hate to speculate a percentage, but the building is nearly the same. It's in the same place. The setbacks are the same. We trimmed a, a foot off of the north end of the building because we we're we we're in the floodplain just a little bit with the garage drive. But the, the bioswale was there. The drive is very similar. The, uh, the 2018 meeting that the plan had definitely been set by then and uh, we can look at it now or we'll be happy to discuss it later you'll you'll uh, find the 2018 notes in the in e track it if that's what you use uh, uh, the, the okay. site plan documents have the 2018 notes and the rezoning um, the rezoning uh, 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 documents has the 2016. I found the 2018 in the other, in the other um, uh, document list in, in e -track it. So it is in there, but we will absolutely have that and it's accessible and, and uh, uh, we have that plan now, if you'd like to look at it or we'll certainly have it next time without a doubt. Sir, I don't think we need to look at it now. Make sure though in your public participation meeting that it's very clear, like oh, even if it's be. tiny, tiny things that have changed, like I would just make it really clear what has that's changed. Where we ask, that's where we asked for the table table to table because we were very surprised we had met with them twice and the even the 2016 project was extremely similar to the 2018 and so anyways we're, we're going to meet with them uh, just for that reason um thanks and then i'll just echo everything everybody else said but also i'd be curious to hear next time um if you've considered electrification since you know one of our callers did mention that and um we have approved a couple of projects recently that were full electrification and if if not why not we don't require it but i would just like to hear next time a little bit more that you've looked into it electrification that is it and I, and excuse me for not knowing what you mean do you mean ev or do no. you mean solar <laughs> Commissioner Mills, would you like to take this one? Sorry, it's my, pardon my day job. Um, it, it's it's the idea that you don't necessarily hook up to natural gas, so it's a furnace. That, you know your your uh, HVAC system and appliances that are running on electric. Gotcha. 
for the purpose of meeting <clears throat> sustainability goals that are very aggressive in the city of Vancouver. Exactly. Because natural gas is a fossil fuel. Um, so it's to get rid of that. Um, and this is one where building electrification also helps to make those solar panels pay for themselves faster because you're using a lot of, you know, you're using additional electricity. Anyway, um, so just something to consider. Okay. Uh, any, everybody had talked. Anyone can want to make a motion to postpone? Moved by Commissioner Milstein, seconded by Commissioner Abrams. Discussion of that, Commissioner Milstein. Mr. Leonard, do we need a date certain on this one? Yes, I would, I'd recommend you um, postpone to a date certain. Um, my recommendation would be for you to consider the, actually the January 5th meeting. Um, the, next, the next meeting of the commission, we do have um, a light agenda, I think. However, I am concerned about the ability to get um, invitations out for a meeting um, over that time frame and, uh, and hold it and get that information to us in time. Unfortunately, our 15th agenda of December is fairly robust. So um, if you're open to it, um, I'm open to it, but I would recommend postponing to the January 5th. Mr. Leonard, I was actually, because of the holidays, maybe it might be wiser to postpone it until our second regular meeting in January, just in case they're able to do, just over the holidays, they're not able to do it and they'll schedule for early January. That question for me? That would be the 19th. Oh, the 19th. So if it's okay with the commission, I'll friendly amendment to postpone it until January 19th. What is that for? I'm confused that he won't, that they won't be able to get their meeting together in time before then? A public participation meeting, especially uh -huh. because we have the holidays over the next six weeks. Mm -hmm. I would actually um, ask the petitioner, uh, from your perspective, uh, we want to we like to do a date certain just so that those who are listening know kind of what is planned. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, we would we would um, we we were expecting to meet with them when uh, when we were talking about citizen participation meeting i think we can do it that much quicker we have the list um I, i'd like to uh i'd like to if we can turn the part citizen participation meeting around quickly um hit the next uh soonest meeting that we can hit from that um i, I think i think most of these most of these items we can we can uh we can handle uh but the the meeting is going to be the most difficult thing to get together, but I think we can get to that quickly. So I don't want to say a date, but we'd like to do the soonest one. If, if we can, if we can meet with them next week, we'd like to hit the next planning commission meeting, which could be December, which could be December. I, I don't know that we need a, a, a citizen participation meeting, not, not, you know, notify everyone, but we wanted to address all the people on the letter and anyone else uh, on part of the, uh, on the list that we have. That was, that was our goal. So go, go ahead, the, um, your, your- Thank you. Yeah. Uh, well, I was gonna, I'm gonna pose it back to um, some of the commissioners who, uh, who were um, thinking about, yes, go ahead, Mr. Leonard. I just, wa I just wanna go through some timing here. The next uh, meeting of the Planning Commission is on uh, December 1st. Um, that packet will likely go out on next Wednesday, the 25th because of the holiday. Um, so that would provide, um, we would need, um, um, we would need responses from the petitioner on the outstanding items, as well as, um, if to know that the meeting had taken place probably by Monday, um, that seems like a fairly aggressive time frame from my lens. Um, again, um, the 15th, we've got, uh, three projects, um, tentatively scheduled there already. Um, I, you know, it, it's, it's up to the commission. There's no, no reason why we couldn't add it to that meeting. Um, that would, that would, would that be a pretty heavy load 
um, for that meeting. That's why I was proposing the fifth. Um, so. I, so we have to set the date here now. That That's what I'm not sure about. Uh, uh, is that correct? Um, if, um, if we set the date now, um, that date is set. Otherwise, the earliest that we would be able to do, um, um, well, if, if we're shooting for that time frame, actually, we could um, just table it. That would mean it couldn't happen. It could definitely not happen before that date, but it could happen at some point after. We would re-notice the public hearing at that point if we don't know the date. Um, the, the logic of that is, is anybody who was here to hear about it, they're um, paying attention. They can follow when it's being rescheduled. If we don't know when that is, we will re-notice the public hearing whenever that happens. So you need the additional time, the two weeks, I think that's required for it. Yeah, for the but to be oh, okay. but to I be see. clear, if we set it for January fifth, um, we could re-notice for that now. So if that's a tentative date, I would perhaps we do just table it. If you think there's any chance of going beyond that, more simply, I think it would just make sense to set that date as our target date for follow up. Oh, okay, yeah. I, I can't I can't argue. I I I agree. Um, January fifth, uh, we don't want to go beyond. We don't, I'd like to not go beyond that. I think we can meet our burdens pretty quickly, uh, but uh, the first might be, if you have to notice for two weeks, then yeah, the, we, the first was not, is not going not to work. So, All right, so I'd, I'd recommend postponement to January 5th for the item then. That's friendly. And Commissioner Abens, you're okay with that. Any other discussion of a postponement to January 5th? Do you want a roll call vote, Mr. Leonard? On the postponement? No, okay, voice vote is okay. So all in favor of postponing this item until January 5th, 2021, which is crazy. Uh, <laughs> please raise your hand or uh, say yes. Okay. I, yes. yes. That is every hand that I see or a verbal yes. So um, that is unanimous. We will see you back here in, should be months, but it's not all that far off. Um, thank you very much. Again, thank you very much, Planning Commission, for all your input. Have a good evening. You too. All right. Um, 8.30. Do we need a break before the next one, or are we chugging on, and we'll have a break closer to 9.30-ish? 9.30. Okay. Anticipating that this might be a long one, maybe a break now would be wise. Fill up your water bottle. Um, maybe a break after the presentation before public comment. Uh, that would work too, yeah. Let's do that. So let's plan on hearing the presentation and the staff report and before the public hearing, we can take a break then. Perfect. Um, okay, the next item up uh, for discussion is 9A. Uh, this is 2060 West Stadium Boulevard site plan with rezoning for city council approval and a special exception use for planning commission approval. Um, as our usual practice, we will start with a petitioner presentation for up to 10 minutes and then a staff presentation. And as we just discussed, we'll take a short break then and then have the public hearing following that. Um, and then we'll dive into commission discussion. Just give me a minute here. No problem. Okay, so uh, I have our presentation slides ready, um, and I was going to be controlling the slides, but I uh, I would need the ability to share my screen. I think. One moment. Okay.
Is this your full team? Usually Mr. Uh, Leonard asks this, but do you see everybody? Are you missing somebody? Uh, I think we have one more, Tina. Check out the Hollywood squares, see who's missing. <laughs> There we go. Hey Brett, what do hey, I Brett, what do hey, I have to do to get off the phone? Um what what are the last three digits of your number? Six two four four. Oh, it's like the cycle of <laughs> the endless cycle. <laughs> Goodbye. All right. Can I hear you, Sean? Uh oh, I think I got disconnected, Brett. So I'll no, try no, no. I, do we it hear you through the computer. Can you hear? No, me? we hear you. No, we hear you. Yeah. I can't hear anyone else. Are you? Let's see. Oh, there we go. I had to unmute my computer. Sorry about that. Can you? You can hear us now. I can hear you now. I had my my computer muted because obviously we were trying to do the phone, and obviously technology is not working today. So we'll go by the phone. <laughs> all right. Ted, you should uh, be all set. You have up to 10 minutes. All right, everyone. Uh, thank you uh, for seeing us this evening. My name is Sean Havera. Uh, most of you um, I am familiar with. Uh, Sarah, congratulations on being the chairperson this year. Uh, first time I think we're before you uh, in a while. Uh, and welcome, Com Commissioner Dish. Um, we are talking today in regards to 2060 West Stadium. Um, we have on with us uh, several members of our development team uh, with North Stadium LLC. We have myself, Mike Kennedy, and Jordan Samp. We are serving as the master developer of the site as well as the specific developer for the storage facility. We also have David Sath, who, who is with North Star Ann Arbor Properties LLC, who is also representing North Star Bank. Uh, we have Tom Covert, Ted Hirsch, and Tina Fix with Midwestern Consulting, who are our civil engineer and landscape architect. Hobbs and Black Architects, we have David Nims, uh, who is the architect for the bank. And then Mohegan Hansen Architecture, we have Ron Paul, who is the architect for the storage facility. Go ahead, Ted. So to give some site context, uh, this is uh, on St West Stadium, south of Liberty Street, across from the uh, UPS. Uh, USPS station. Um, currently along the West Stadium corridor, you have an existing mixture of various commercial businesses, uh, which is also a AAATA bus route with access to I-94. The current zoning of the property is currently a split zoning with C2B at the front along stadium and then the parking district along the back portion of the property. We are proposing to do a rezoning of, of the parking district to C2B to bring that into compliance with the master plan, which calls for the entire area uh, and the property to be considered a commercial uh, use area. Next slide. So part of the reasons that this site was selected for were for a, uh, a number of reasons. Obviously, this is specific to the self storage facility, but we'll also provide a little context in for North Star Bank. So one of the uh, reasons that this was selected is that this provides a close proximity to not only residents in the area, but also to businesses as well, uh, which we which we find are uh, both users uh, of storage facilities. Um, it, it is an ability for students to be able to store uh, belongings throughout the year. We, we own a couple student housing um, apartments in downtown, so we do know how this can be done. Within the area, there are currently just under 19,000 renters that are within a three mile radius. Uh, and this provides to those renters an affordable solution um, when they need to store uh, belongings that they may not be able to fit within a, a smaller apartment or a smaller home uh, or residential dwelling. We also feel that this helps support the A20 plan, uh, which one of the uh, components of that is to work to help minimize the amount of mileage that is required um, to be driven. And with the majority of the current uh, storage facilities in the area, they were on the outskirts of town. 
And so residents would have to drive, businesses would have to drive um, several, several miles in order to utilize those facilities. So that allows uh, the reduction in mileage into this. In regards to North Star Bank, uh, North Star Bank currently has a small uh, retail operation down on State Street, just north of Eisenhower. They have been looking for several years in regards to finding a site in which they can develop a full service branch. Their current one is not a full service branch, it's a very small uh, facility. It also allows them to consolidate and, and expand um, their operational back of house, their lending services, uh, their operational staff as well uh, in the area and provide them room to grow and expand. They, they continue to want to expand in the Ann Arbor area. This is the first area. Uh, they, they're look, they're going to be looking at other facilities and sites throughout Ann Arbor to, to continue to expand their footprint. Um, I'm going to now hand this over to Ted, who will be able to talk more about some of the site context and site-specific items. Thanks for that introduction, Sean. Um, so yeah, like Sean said, I'll be kind of focusing more on the site-specific um, features um, after he gave you that nice contextual uh, presentation. So uh, we'll start with the existing conditions. This is a, uh, a vacant parcel with a, uh, a dealership and parking lot. Um, no real natural features to speak of on site, no uh, floodplain, no wetland, no steep slopes. Um, there's one landmark tree that's in proximity, um, although it's not on the site, it's um, it's in the residential uh, development to the east and the critical root zone is, uh, encroaches a little bit into this property. Um, we talked a little bit about the, the proposed uses um, and uh, just kind of uh, highlight the fact this is a, a nice reuse of a, an, you know, an infill project um, of a, this vacant uh, parcel and um, the two buildings that we've got proposed are the self-storage facility um, and uh, the bank with uh, second and third level offices. Um, also want to highlight the, the drive-through that's being proposed for the bank as well. Um, we'll we'll kind of go through um, some higher points of, of why we feel that's a, a good feature that we're proposing. Um, the rezoning of uh, the the rectangular portion of this parcel um, is actually currently zoned uh, parking district um, over on the east end and we propose to uh, rezone that to uh, be consistent with the commercial zoning of this corridor um, and uh, again with this drive through we'd be uh, requesting a special exception use. Uh, talk a little bit about the actual layout. Um, so the self storage facility um, little over 120,000 square feet of floor area uh, across four floors, uh, the bank and office building, um, a smaller, uh, less than 5,000 square foot ground floor with um, roughly 9,000 square foot um, second and third floors with offices. Uh, the parking required uh, for the entire development um, calculated 137 parking spaces. Uh, we're requesting a variance on that as we provide 102 parking spaces. Um, we have uh, consulted the EV draft ordinance and uh, have incorporated a plan that um, shows how we would intend to meet those requirements. Um, we'll talk a little bit about the landscaping. Uh, the, the east and the north um, uh, we have adjacent residential developments. Uh -oh. so, uh, buffer from those developments. Um, part of the, uh, the variance request uh, that we have for parking, we have a, two additional uh, variance requests. Um, as there's some contamination on site from the previous users, we'll be uh, requesting a deviation from the bioretention requirements so that we're not infiltrating and exacerbating that uh, contamination. Um, and then we're also requesting a variance for the street trees that would normally uh, be required in the road right of way. We would be proposing to plant them on site as uh, there's uh, a sidewalk directly adjacent to the road and really no room to plant trees. And this would be consistent with the the existing streetscape along West Stadium. 
uh, pretty simple as far as serving the, the buildings with utilities. There's existing mains out in uh, the Stadium Boulevard right of way. Small extension of the sanitary sewer on the west side would allow us to serve uh, leads for both buildings perpendicularly across the road. Uh, and then an existing water main, uh, we'd be tapping with uh, fire suppression, uh, domestic service leads for each building, uh, as well as uh, two fire hydrants to help um, meet the fire department requirements for, for serving for uh, fire protection. Uh, stormwater management uh, would be a big upgrade. There's no um, stormwater management system existing. Uh, it just all directly contributes to the city system. So we'd be proposing to take that underground stored in chambers and then uh, control out, outlet release to the, to the city system. Um, and from there, I'll hand it over to David Nims. He'll talk a little bit about the, the big building. One minute left. Did you say that you plan to hand it over? Oh, is. Oh, sorry about that. Can you guys hear me? Yes. Okay, uh, I'll be very brief. Um, as Ted said, the, the bank's about 22,000 square feet. The 18,000 square feet of its general office and another 5,000 is uh, retail bank and, and lobby to service that general office. Um, we have a slightly irregular shape to the site, which has guided the architecture as it's predominantly brick and glass with metal accents. Um, per the client's desires, the exterior kind of blends a little modern and a little traditional aesthetic uh, to enhance the stadium road corridor, uh, to you know, kind of promote, promote a sense of timelessness so it can consistently act as an asset to the community. Um, the northeast corner uh, of the building anchors is anchored by a multi-story glass enclosed stairwell uh, that serves as the main access to the upper levels of the office while providing a sense of arrival to the site. And with that, I will turn it over to Mohegan Hansen. Hi, I'm Ron Powell. Um, this that is, is 10 minutes. minutes. Should I quit? Yes, Ron. We'll, we'll hopefully get back to that. Very good. Thank you. Mr. Hirsch, if you could uh, remove the shared screen as well. Unless, Chris, you want that for uh, your summary for any reason. I think I'm all set. Uh, I'll refer to any slides that may come up uh, during just a couple of issues that I wanted to, to uh, touch on. I think the petitioner did a very good job uh, presenting. They covered just about my whole checklist there. A couple of things, the underground stormwater uh, that was approved by the Washtenaw County Drain Commissioner's Office. And if indeed at this site, I'm sure it's gonna come up if it weren't rezoned from the P, which is on the east side of the site, uh, to the C2B, which is the business service district. Um, that the, there's a little, if you go back to the slide, there's a little finger that was shown there. So if let's say it, the rezoning wasn't approved, they would have to remove that, that kind of that one story finger and just a little bit of a portion to stay out of the P parking zoning. I don't know if we're gonna go, yes. So you could see that's absolutely right. So that's the whole P area that's zoned for parking. So if it wasn't rezoned, you'd have to shave off kind of that one story little finger right there going down. So if you're trying to just at least get a visual of what would be missing if they didn't get the rezoning approved, that's the portion of the building that wouldn't meet the, the rear setback. Otherwise, it does meet floor area ratios, setbacks for the, for the side, front, and rear. And with that, I'm here to answer any questions uh, Planning Commission or the public may have. Thank you very much. Um, because I know that there are a number of people on the line and we want to make sure that we are hydrated and ready to take public comments. Let's take a um, five minute, five minute break. By my clock, that will bring us back here at 846. Um, and at that time, we'll have the public hearing. So those of you who are on the phone, stay with us. Uh, we're taking a TV timeout and we'll be back at 8.46.
us back I will call us back into session and um, we will have the public hearing so uh, this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the proposed development at 2060 West Stadium public comment may be made by calling 877-853 five two four seven and then entering meeting ID nine seven eight three one five five two four five one city staff will select callers that have raised their hand you do that by pressing star nine um, we'll call on you by the last three digits of your telephone number please when you're speaking move to a quiet area and mute any background sound um, or television so that we can hear you clearly and please state your name and address at the beginning of your comments we do have a number of folks on the line and already a number of hands up so be patient um, we will we will get to you and I will give callers a audible 30 second um, note when that time is uh, coming up when the end of the time is coming up so starting with caller with the phone number ending with 008, um, caller with phone number ending with 008, uh, if you can unmute yourself, you would have three minutes to address the planning commission. Hello. Hello, we can hear you. Am I being heard? Yes. Good evening, commissioners. Uh, my name is David Olmstead. I live at 600 Ridgewood Court. Our neighbors have requested that I speak first, then Sue Perry. Director Leonard has graciously arranged for our calls to be accepted in that order. And if we have time constraints, then Kurt Gardner to complete our uh, statement. Other neighbors then will be called in random order three minutes apiece. A copy of Sue's and my combined statement was sent by email to planning at a2gov.org just before meeting time. So you can follow along and so you can track our timing so that we can make a seamless and effective presentation. We respectfully request that the commission vote under its bylaws, Article 8, Section 3, to modify its time limitations to allow me to speak up to five and three quarter minutes and Sue up to three and a half minutes. Given that so, we're in the middle of the comment now, we're not gonna be able to do that. So if you can continue um, with your public comment. Okay, I will simply note that by collapsing two public hearings into one, you've effectively cut our timing in half and your timing seems highly stacked in favor of petitioner. Uh, Kurt, because I'll be abruptly cut off, note where I am so you can later on uh, present the rest of the statement. Hello, commissioners. We future North Star neighbors appreciate the need to redevelop the dormant Naylor site and realize that North Star's public storage facility suits that need. We will be cooperative and, and constructive. We have two requests. One, that the commission weigh the interests of North Star and the interests of residents equally. And two, that North Star provide actual answers to legitimate questions raised from the beginning of the project process. Along, the lots along this section of Stadium Boulevard are unusually zoned. They have bifurcated zoning. The lots are zoned C2B in front and a narrow strip in the rear is zoned parking. The fact that this original and longstanding zoning is unusual does not make it suspect. Instead, it warrants careful attention to why this unusual provision was there in the first place. The purpose had to be more than simply assuring adequate parking. 30 more seconds. <laughs> I can't possibly get through this. I need, I, this is an outrage. This is an outrage. You can cut me off and I would ask other people that have seen this statement written to give it to you haphazardly piecemeal over time. You are not equally treating, we ask simply equal treatment 
between the petitioner and the resident. You're not doing that. You haven't even helped us do that. Good, good night. Outrage. Thank you, sir. Um, to be clear, we're following our bylaws, um, which lay out kind of how we uh, how we operate public hearings. Uh, Mr. Leonard, I just want to the kind of time given in this is similar to what has been happening since I've been on commission. I just want to make sure that that's consistent. Uh, that's correct. Mr. Olmsted, um, you'll know from your communications had expressed frustration that the Planning Commission doesn't hold separate hearings for every action uh, with a, associated with a petition. In this case, a rezoning along with the site plan. Um, as you indicated, um, we are following our ordinance requirements. A public hearing is held for many of those actions. It is um, by practice in our bylaws. We do not hold separate public hearings. Um, um, uh, the Planning Commission does have the opportunity to waive time requirements. Um, from my view, this is a very similar petition to other types of petitions that we frequently uh, consider within the time allotments of our public hearing. So I wouldn't recommend that, but um, if that's something that the Planning Commission desires, it could be done. Um, um, and if you have any other questions, I'm happy to address them. Commissioner Abrams. Can members of the public speak more than once during a hearing? No. Okay. Could you proceed on um, finding the next person that was in lot, uh, that was kind of arranged? I also want to just note, um, thank you to Commissioner Abrams for pointing out the additional, the comments that were received. So this is um, listed as an item number eight online in the e-track or item number nine i think it's it's titled com eight what um what the uh, the person who just called in was um starting to work through a caller with phone number ending with three two one you have three minutes to address the planning commission yes i'm here Hi. can you Go hear ahead. me yes you yes my name is susan perry and i live at 1708 fair street the staff report recognizes the unique purpose of this separate zoning for parking. Staff states, quote, historically, P zoning was used as a buffer from commercial uses adjacent to residential uses, unquote. An extended buffer zone to insulate residents from actual operations is absolutely essential here. Storage operations mean truck and trailer traffic and moving noises and late lights 6.30 a.m. to 9 p.m. every day, seven days a week. Instead, North Star wants rezoning so it can move its building and operations 40 to 50 feet closer to residents. North Star insists that its project must be allowed if it meets current UDC requirements. Fair enough, but just as North Star wants to rely upon existing standards, so too must residents be able to rely upon long-standing zoning that was sp specifically intended to protect their interests. Nonetheless, staff gives greater weight to North Star's interests. Staff says, quote, the master plan, land used element, recommends commercial uses for this site. And thus, quote, staff recommends that the zoning be approved because the proposed uses uses permitted under the C2B zoning district are consistent with the recommendations of the master plan, unquote. Staff's reference to the master plan is extremely misleading. There is nothing in the master plan which recommends that parking zones be eliminated or that parking zones be rezoned commercial. Here is what the master plan in summary actually recommends. Number one, minimizing the amount of unnecessary parking spaces. Number two, designing parking lots to be less aggravating. And number three, requiring that the surface parking be placed at the rear of the buildings. Now let's compare staff standard for rezoning that being quote, consistent with the recommendations of the master plan, unquote, with what the law requires. Compare the staff recommended standard for rezoning with its recommendation for site plan approval. For site plan approval, staff carefully recites the specific criteria of UDC section 5.29.6D for site plan approval, namely, one, compliance with all laws and regulations, two, non-disturbance of natural features, and three, not cause a public or private nuisance, <clears throat> not have a detrimental effect on public health, safety, or welfare. Like its specific criteria for site plan approval, the UDC likewise has specific criteria for rezoning. Any more seconds. 
quote, for the purposes of establishing and maintaining sound, stable, and desirable development within the territorial limits of the city, the boundaries of any zoning district shall not be amended except and here, <clears throat> in summary, are the three criteria. One, to correct an area. Two, because of change in municipal policy. Or three, because of changed conditions of the area. The staff recommendation for rezoning does not recognize or address any of the required UDC criteria. The staff recommendation minutes. for rezoning is legally defective on its face. At the same time, North Shore's answers to rezoning application questions are vague or exaggerated. Thank you very much. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending with the digit 630. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Good evening. Thank you. This is Kirk Gardner at Ford Dover Court. Continuing to finish this uh, presentation. Instead of saying there are two jobs in the storage facility, North Star exaggerates the rezoning allows for the development of a business that promotes employment op opportunities and helps to stimulate the local economy. With rezoning, North Star's application states that with, re with rezoning, noise and light pollution are potentially reduced. Views from the homes to the east will be largely unaffected in that the rezoning will help to create a stronger relationship between the business on the east side of Stadium Boulevard and the residential neighborhoods to the east. Look carefully at the rezoning application. Every advantage promised in the application will be accomplished without the rezoning just by reducing the 120,000 square foot building by 10,000 square feet. Compare North Star's exaggerations and exertions without evidence in its zone rezoning application to North Star's actual replies to the questions of nearby residents at the citizen participation meeting. There are questions about noise, sun blockage, light, night light pollution, trash being discarded when, when storage renters, from storage renters. All problems that will be severely aggravated by moving the storage structure 20 to 25 question mark feet closer to the residents by rezoning. Here are the invariable in North Star replies. We are further refining our plans and will incorporate community contents from the meeting to revise our current site layout as appropriate. Appropriate to whom? We are working with our engineers currently to address noise emissions. We anticipate little noise to the surrounding uses. Question mark. We are working with all our architects to provide us with a sun study exercise which will allow us to better answer this topic. Have not been seen. We are still in the preliminary design phase with regards to lighting. We work together with neighborhood property owners to ensure needs are met. This has not been seen. North Star promised to get back to residents with answers to the questions in the meeting report. North Star lists the email addresses for each question there, but there's not been any answers to these questions by North Star. Staff response to North Star evasiveness is a trusting, be careful. For, for example, in this August 12th letter, staff says, please ensure all lighting does not cause a nuisance with the adjacent neighborhood. Unlike staff, we neighbors have no comfort or satisfaction for our lives and homes in coming years by North Star's exaggerations and assertions without evidence. North Star has not answered our questions. We will have to find out the answers ourselves. And instead, indeed, staff and this commission should want answers to these same questions. There is a way for all of us to get these answers. Planning staff requested North Star to consider reducing the floor space of either the office building or the storage facility to meet parking standards. North Star refused seconds. staff's request. In the September 11th re reply letter, North Star wrote, our refusal is predicated on dot, 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 application of knowledge of other storage facilities. Some of the buildings blown by the developer have only required 12 to 15 parking spaces to adequately serve the building. In effect, North Star is telling its neighbors, the planning commission, the staff that's based on North Star's experience with similar building and knows how to avoid all of the problems and concerns raised by staff. One thing to consider is the overall size versus all the rest that are without the U.S. We'd like to see North Star provide evidence of another 120,000 square foot facility that they manage. That's time. Thank you very much. For those on the phone, a number of people have raised their hands and we'll call on you in turn. Caller with a phone number ending with 437. 437, you have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hello, uh, my name is Andrea Lahadney. I live at 1609 Greenview Drive. And uh, basically this development does not fit in this area. It belongs in an industrial area, um, not somewhere, you know, with 
shopping and like things that would actually, uh, you know, it doesn't add anything to the neighborhood. Uh, the size isn't, I'm not, I'm not crazy about the size, but that isn't necessarily my problem. Um, but the use of it is uh, storage facility, you know, there's, I don't know how many others right around this neighborhood, uh, or I'm sorry, right, you know, within a two mile radius. And uh, also, as far as the bank goes, I have nothing against uh, a local or regional bank trying to set up shop and, you know, have more space, they can branch out their retail offerings. But honestly, there are three other banks and a credit union, you know, within a quarter mile of this site. And I just don't think that that's a good use of this site. Thank you very much. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending was 737 737. Uh, you have three, hello, three minutes can to address you hear me? Yes. Yeah, go ahead. Okay. Hi. Um, I thank you for giving me this opportunity to address you. My name is David Akey. I live at 1739 Ivywood Drive on the neighborhood right to the east. And uh, so my I object to allowing this or making uh, allowances uh, for this project because the project essentially gives the city nothing in return and the neighbors nothing really in return for the allowances that they're asking to be granted. Um, it is disturbing to me for one that there's concerns of contamination underneath in the site and the developer seems to just state that they would like to uh, cover it up and ignore it rather than remediate that contamination in their presentation. I just noticed that for the first time. And I would like that to be addressed uh, very urgently. This type of development here that they're asking for variance so that they can bring in actually traffic. They claim this is consistent with the net zero for Ann Arbor, but this development is really intended to attract uh, traffic and specifically larger vehicles, trucks, moving vans and trailers and stuff into this, uh, what we would hope would be a transit corridor. They have stated that they believe that the views from the east are largely unaffected in their uh, petition for rezoning, which I do not see how that could possibly be true. In that petition, they have stated uh, benefits from employment by definition of self storage has minimal employment opportunities. Um, so it is really going to be a very large empty building that attracts traffic and a lot of truck traffic to the area. And we should not be changing our zoning to allow this sort of development to occur. And then we should also ask some very serious questions about what they plan on doing with the uh, possible contamination in the soil on the site. Um, thank you very much for listening to me. I could go on for about 30 more minutes or so, but I think I'll keep it short and succinct. Thank you very much. Caller with a phone number ending with 470470. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Caller ending with 470, if you press star six, you should be able to unmute your phone and address the Planning Commission. Hi, right, go ahead. Good caller. evening, commissioners. Thank you. Good evening, commissioners and staff. Thank you for your time and for your service. My name is Kent Love Ramirez. I live with my family at 1919 Ivywood Drive, one of the homes adjacent to the proposed development. We sought out the Eberwhite neighborhood when searching for a home in order to raise our family in an urban walkable community with nearby goods and services. We regularly walked to school and parked to the east and restaurants, grocery shopping, the hardware store and dry cleaning and more to the west along Stadium Boulevard. It's the life we imagined now at risk of being tainted by what we feel is an ill-advised development that does not serve the needs of our residents. The city's land use plan for the stadium corridor states, quote, the purpose of a neighborhood and local business district is to serve the needs of the surrounding residential neighborhood, 
providing goods that are needed on a day-to-day -day basis. Simply put, 120,000 square foot, four-story self-storage facility does not align with the day-to-day -day needs of nearby residents, despite North Star Stadium stating during their public participation meeting that they anticipate 80% usage from local residents. The land use plan recommends improvements to the Liberty Stadium District that, quote, create a stronger relationship between businesses on the east side of Stadium Boulevard and the residential neighborhood to the east. A self-storage facility does not create a stronger relationship with residents. In fact, it creates a divisive one. And we believe that there is no precedent or need for such a development adjacent to a residential neighborhood. As owners of an adjacent property, we will be directly impacted. A four story, which by the way, the petitioner failed to mention in his presentation, with a cinder block wall will obstruct sight lines and diminish natural light, including our view of sunsets. Earlier this month, I shared with the Planning Commission and City Council photos taken of my family from our backyard, looking at a beautiful sunset. If the development proceeds as planned, there will be no such views. In the initial community presentation meeting or participation meeting, they showed sight lines from street level. If you note in our backyard, we slope up to our property line on the ridge. Uh, let's see. Uh, so we instead will stare at a cinder block structure that will likely increase light and noise pollution from the physical buildings and increase vehicular traffic using the bank's proposed three lane drive through and also loading zones for the storage facilities, 908 proposed units. We respectfully ask the planning, thank you. We respectfully ask the planning commission to decline the rezoning and special exceptions request. The development will negatively and irrevocably impact the adjacent residential neighborhood and is misaligned with the vision of the city's master plan. Thank you for your time and consideration. Thank you. For the folks on the line, we see a number of hands still up. So we are working our way through the queue. Caller with the phone number ending with 060. Caller with the phone number ending with 060. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hello, can you hear me? Sure can. can. My name is Ingrid Peterson. I live at 1943 Ivywood, directly behind 2060 West Stadium. My house featured several times in the development presentation. I'm speaking today with a mix of disappointment and outrage at both the Planning Commission and North Stadium LLC. After the July meeting hosted by North Stadium LLC, I contacted several members of the City Planning Commission as well as City Council to register my objections. I received one response that indicated I would be added to a distribution list regarding the status of this project. I never received any status updates. As our neighborhood organized throughout the summer, it became evident that most of the residents were in a similar situation. The lack of status updates impedes our ability to participate in a decision-making process that directly affects us. I am disappointed but not surprised by North Stadium LLC's contempt for the residents of this neighborhood and their lack of due diligence. I make this claim based on their neighborhood correspondence study, which is a blatant conflict of interest. The content of this document misrepresents and omits the concerns of the neighborhood. Among the omitted items was a question of why 2060 West Stadium was a better location than other available plots on stadium between Liberty and Pauline. This question was raised to address the issues of large vehicle, large vehicle traffic as well as avoiding the need for rezoning. North Stadium LLC had no answer and is seeking to hide this inquiry from the Planning Commission. The question concerning light wildlife was linked to an issue of trash disposal and was presented as a specific issue with, um, with a former neighboring business and had resulted in a citation from the city. This was not a hypothetical question, but an actual concern about attracting raccoons and possums into the area that then pose a threat to residents and our pets. I personally have dealt with several encounters, some resulting in vet visits and required erecting a privacy fence. Further, North Stadium LLC is arguing that North Star Bank is a as a regional bank is a unique addition to the corridor. This is more evidence of their lack of due diligence as the other banks in the area are local and other regional banks. I object to the unnecessary rezoning of 2060 West Stadium and a development project that is not consistent with the city's master plan 
simply to benefit a collection of companies that are not transparent and not reliable community partners. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with phone number ending in 134. Call our name with 134. You have three minutes. Thank you. Ken Garber, 28, Haver Hill Court, again. Thank you for the opportunity to weigh in on the sustainable aspects of this plan, like the last one. It's commendable that the petitioner spoke to the Office of Sustainability and Innovations. And I'm glad for the apparent voluntary compliance with the city's not yet passed EV charging ordinance. And this petitioner, unlike the last one, at least knows what building electrification means and has considered it. But that's about the extent of it. Mr. Havera's comment that this project will advance the A20 goals by reducing vehicle miles traveled is a stretch since these storage facilities don't get much traffic to begin with, which the petitioner acknowledges by asking for a variance to avoid putting in 35 parking spaces that it doesn't need. There is no commitment to electrifying the two proposed buildings, although the petitioner does write in its A20 response letter that a VRF system for the bank building only is under review. I don't know if that's still the case. Maybe the petitioner can tell us tonight. As for the self-storage building, which is much bigger, it's definitely going to be gas. However, there are heat pump HVAC solutions in similar storage facilities out there, even in cold climates. Has the petitioner looked into this? The petitioner in its A20 response letter writes that an electric reheat system in the bank building will help by reducing the use of natural gas. However, reheat systems are inherently energy wasteful and may be the single most inefficient HVAC system type. In fact, reheat as a design practice is prohibited by energy standard 90.1 of the American Society of Heating refrigerating and air conditioning engineers. So for the petitioner to write that electric reheat is somehow a sustainable element of the plan, when the opposite is probably true, is a measure of how little it's actually offering. Regarding solar, the petitioner states that without net metering, it doesn't make economic sense. Now we're all unhappy that the Michigan Public Service Commission let net metering expire in 2016 and we're trying to get it back. But many of us are putting in solar anyway. That's because eliminating greenhouse gas emissions, not just reducing them, is an urgent global imperative and an individual responsibility. 30 more Thanks. seconds. That's all. Thank you very much. Caller with the phone number ending in 340. Caller with the phone number ending in 340. Uh, if you could press star six to unmute yourself, you have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hi, thank you very much. Um, my name is Laura Florence. Um, I live at 800 Dartmoor Road. Um, I sent an email um, but did not get it in in time to be included with your packet, so I wanted to call in um, and read the contents of my email. Um, Dear Planning Commission and City Council, I'm writing to voice my strong opposition to a proposed development at 2060 West Stadium Boulevard. I live in the neighborhood behind this location and am, and am extremely concerned that this development will increase traffic, congestion, and light and noise pollution in our area. In addition, this development is a visual blight and will be detrimental to the relationship between the stadium business area and the nearby neighborhoods. The stadium business area should be made more accessible to residents, attractive, safe for pedestrians, and consistent with the residential character of surrounding neighborhoods. I am asking that you do not approve the rezoning request. I would like to see this empty lot developed in a way that is consistent with the city's stated vision for the stadium corridor. My family has benefited from the enhancements along the stadium that promote walkability, shopping, and dining out. This development would be a blight on the stadium corridor and negatively affect families in my neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. 
I see a couple more hands raised. If you are on the line and would like to speak, um, you can press star nine to digitally raise your hand and get in the queue. Caller with a phone number ending with 009. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hi, this is Rena Seltzer. I live at Six Dover Court, which is, um, again, the neighborhood just to the east of the development. And I just want to echo my neighbor's concerns. Um, stadium has become a, a nicer streetscape um, in the time, in the uh, 22 years since we've lived in the area. And uh, like other neighbors, we appreciate that there are businesses that we can walk to, um, there are grocery stores, there's, uh, there's Baskin Robbins, there's, you know, like there's uh, retail. Um, having a storage unit kind of right in the middle of that section of stadium just really seems like it is kind of creating a big dead zone. Um, a lot of people have mentioned the number of banks there as well, but particularly I'm concerned about this huge storage unit. Um, it sounds like it's really mostly to serve the students who use the buildings that the developer um, also owns. And it just doesn't seem like there's a reason why that needs to be right on top of a residential neighborhood. It sounds like more like something that should be on a street like South Industrial or another commercial area that doesn't just directly abut uh, up against a residential neighborhood. I'm also really concerned about the impact on the sight lines and the sun blockage for the neighborhood. So I hope you will take the neighbor's concerns seriously and think about um, what can be done in the site that is a better use and more fitting for a residential neighborhood. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with a phone number ending with 833. Caller with a phone number ending with 833. You have Hello. three minutes to address the planning question. Go ahead. Um, hi, my name is Kelly Goodconnect. I live at 1943 Ivywood. Um, a lot of it, I would like to just add my voice to the points that several other neighbors have brought up about the mismatch and inappropriateness of the storage facility with the adjoining neighborhoods, the concerns about like, noise pollution and traffic difficulties. Um, I would also like to also point out um, the issues that the developer has not been particularly forthcoming or cooperating with addressing the neighborhood's concerns. Um, but in addition, and also to some of the light issues that I would like to point out, um, there are a lot of families and homes in the neighborhood that have vegetable gardens. Um, and I'm really concerned about the light blockage from the building affecting people's ability to use those gardens that they placed in. Thank you. Thank you. There's a couple more hands up and we're getting to you now. If you um, are on the phone and wish to make a comment in the to this public hearing, it's star nine to raise your hand. Caller with a phone number ending with 930. Phone number ending with 930. Um, if you can, you have three minutes to address the Hello. planning commission. Hello, Hello. Uh, my name's Dale Dunlap. I live at 829 Dartmoor, uh, also known as Dartmoor Condominiums Unit 4, which is in some of the drawings, but we are not technically an adjacent neighbor. Uh, we're actually adjacent to the Zalgrick Gaz Grotto parking lot. Uh, but I would argue that our property is would be the most affected by this development. We tend to live on the south side of our house and I have eight windows that face south, which would face directly at the, the huge uh, cinder block wall and from the drawings if you, you notice the the different sides of it we'd be looking at the long side of that and it would dominate the the view from our windows um, I have a lot of other concerns that have already been uh, voiced by other neighbors I, I agree with uh, a lot of what was said so I'll just leave it at that and and just the other thing I wanted to point out is I, I, 
I've read a, a lot of the documentation and read the relevant pieces of the master plan, and I don't see how this development uh, of the storage facility at all fits with the, the character of the, uh, the the master plan for this corridor. So thank you for your time. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending with 608. Caller with the phone number ending with 608. You can unmute yourself. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. To unmute yourself, you can press star six on your phone. caller whose phone number ends in 608 you should be you're in the meeting now to be able to make public comment but uh, it still looks like you're muted so star six is one of the ways to unmute yourself I don't know if there's others it's the way all right we'll try you again Caller with phone number ending with 503. 503. Have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hello, my name is Jonathan Noose. Um, I live at 1906 Ivywood Drive, and I just want to add my voice um, to um, my neighbor's voices um, in opposition to this development. Um, you know, my issue is with. Um, the self storage facility. Um, first of all, the location, I find it hard to believe that there isn't another location um, in Ann Arbor, or the outskirts, um, where this type of building could be located, um, which would be more appropriate um, than a commercial corridor. And also the height of the building, um, you know, four stories, which is going to tower over the tree line. And like one of my other neighbors said, this is the sight line for a lot of us facing west, um, in, and it does, you know, play out in terms of sunsets and um, family parties and those type of things. So it just does not fit in the neighborhood, and I think that's overall what we're looking for is any addition in terms of um, commercial um, buildings. We'd like it to be um, something that we can um, visit, and it, it's cohesive. Um, with a residential neighborhood backing up right to it. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with the phone number ending with the numbers 111. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hi, my name is Amanda Wise and I live at 1937 Ivywood Drive. And um, the proposed development would be basically in our backyard. We live right there. And a portion of the site is zoned P um, for parking service classification to provide a buffer of space between the commercial businesses and the residential neighborhood. And I believe it should not be rezoned. The former owner of the commercial property dug out the berm that was there, separating the neighborhood from the commercial space to, making the, to make the parking lot for his car dealership bigger. And that took out the buffer of trees already that was there. So rezoning the lot now would open it up to future building even closer to our houses. The city of Ann Arbor's application asks how the rezoning will affect the public welfare and the property rights of persons located in the vicinity. Rezoning this land to C, the business service classification, will affect all of the people who have houses adjacent to the land. We will see and hear the activity from the building because they can build even closer. 
we will see the lights and hear the people and hear the cars because there will not be a buffer. The building will create a wall blocking the sky. It will affect the view of our backyard and the tower over our houses and height to be seen from our front yards. It will affect our property values. The builder wants to build a four-story building, which is inconsistent with all of the other buildings in the area. Page 98 of the Ann Arbor City Master Plan's land use element states, to achieve a commercial district that is physically attractive, cohesive shopping district with a unified visual impact that conveys a sense of place and provides a positive impression, that is the goal they have for stadium. Nothing on stadium that is adjacent to a neighborhood is taller than two stories. A four-story building will look out of place, set precedent, for other developments to build to supersize, block the sun, cast security lights well over the tree line. A four-story building will be so tall, it will be the first thing that people see when they step out of Eber White Woods onto Ivy Wood Drive. This would not be physically attractive. It would not provide a unified visual impression. It would be ugly. The developer's application says that the storage facility and bank will attract the interest of the community members and create a stronger relationship. Thank you. Create a stronger relationship between the businesses on the east side of stadium and the residential neighborhood. But people cannot walk to a storage facility. They have to drive a truck there. People cannot walk up through a drive-through at the bank. They have to drive a car through a drive-through at the bank. So please consider not approving the application to rezone the lot from P to C. Please do not approve this four-story building in the location. It's not consistent with the goals of the city master plan Aye. and it does not meet the qualifications. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Caller with phone number ending with 541. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Yes, this is Janet Young. I live at 825 Dartmoor Road, which backs up uh, to the uh, proposed storage unit. Um, I've lived here for 20 years. Uh, I think most of what I'd like to say has already been said and probably much more eloquently than uh, what I, how I can say it. Um, I am uh, very concerned about having a four-story building uh, right behind my house. Um, uh, this will obviously be an eyesore for me and uh, remove my entire southern exposure. Um, I also do not believe that uh, having a storage unit right there on stadium is in any way helpful uh, to our neighborhood. Most of what is on that corridor are businesses um, that people in the neighborhood would use. Uh, I don't see this as being such uh, a business. It seems like such a large storage unit would be much better in an in industrial area. Um, So yes, those those are uh, some of my main concerns, as well as uh, I really do feel that having that there uh, will reduce property values for those of us who have adjacent properties. Thank you. Thank you. Caller with phone number ending was 617. Caller with phone number ending was 617. Uh, if you can unmute your phone, you have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hi, this is Renee Salter at 1925 Ivywood Drive, which is directly adjacent to the proposed development. I'd like to echo all of the sentiments of our neighbors. We recently moved into our home in this neighborhood 
coming from an area with zero walkability, and we were excited to move to a place where our quality of life would be greatly improved. This we intend to be our forever home and plan to live here for over 30 years, hopefully. Um, we, this development will look straight into our second story of our home, into our bedroom, into our toddler's bedroom, and into our bathroom. It will block the sun, it will be an eyesore, and it will negatively affect our way of life. I stand with all of my neighbors and ask that you reconsider the requests of this developer. Thank you. Thank you. For those who have called in, um, I see the line is short. If you haven't spoken yet and wish to address us on this issue, it's star nine. Caller with phone number ending with 608. Caller with phone number ending with 608. If you can unmute your phone, you would have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Caller with phone number ending with 608. If you can press star six on your phone to unmute, you can address the Planning Commission if you desire. That is all I can do to prompt unmuting. Okay, very good. Anyone else? Star nine raises your hand. Seeing no one, I will read the motions. There are three um, for this petition. They are the Ann Arbor City Planning Commission, after hearing all interested persons and reviewing all relevant information, finds the petition to substantially meet the standards in Chapter 55 Zoning Ordinance, Section 5 colon 104 special exceptions conditioned upon approval of the corresponding site plan and therefore approves the 2060 West Stadium special exception use for a three lane drive through bank facility. Second motion is the Ann Arbor City Planning Commission hereby recommends that the mayor and city council approve 2060 West Stadium rezoning from P parking district to C2B business service district and third, the Ann Arbor City Planning Commission hereby recommends that the Mayor and City Council approve the 2060 West Stadium Site Plan subject to, first, combining the subject lot with 2040 West Stadium, second, approval of reduced parking, reduced required parking, relocation of street trees outside the public right-of-way, and elimination of bioretention islands by the Zoning Board of Appeals. Moved by Commissioner... Milstein, seconded by Commissioner Sauvet. Discussion of the motions and Commissioner Dish. Sorry, I saw your hand before and then it went down. Yes, ma'am. And then Mr. Leonard. I lowered it because I was not aware there were still more people in line and I didn't want to cut them off. Uh, so I would like to be Zach Ackerman for a minute. Um, the people who have spoken tonight are correct in so many ways. The proposed storage facility will be a visual blight. It will carry the stadium business area in the wrong direction. I am speaking, I'm sorry, against the, uh, specifically against the second and third motions. Um, so it will carry the stadium business area in the wrong direction, further away from walkability, shopping, and dining out. The project does belong in an industrial area where we are not concerned about streetscape, or less so. A 120 square foot storage facility is detrimental to walkability. I agree with all of these points, and it makes me frustrated and sad. We need to be clear. We are not changing our zoning to allow this project. Our zoning allows this project. We can, rezone, we can refuse the rezoning request of the parking portion of this site, but the bank and the storage facility will likely get built anyway. The only thing that will not happen is what Mr. Chang described as the one-story finger of the storage structure that is projected to jut into the area of the site that is adjacent to the neighborhood and that is zoned for parking. So there could be no greater testimony to the disjuncture between our zoning codes and our vision for Ann Arbor than this proposal. And there could be no greater argument for the urgency of moving forward on a transit supported zoning district that can prescribe 
how residential and retail can work together productively. Such a zoning district would prohibit supersize warehouse style businesses like this one in mixed use zones. So this poses a dilemma for me and I am new at this. So I am looking for counsel from the commission. We can protect the parking buffer between the storage facility and the residential neighborhood, between the proposed storage facility and the residential neighborhood, but this will not stop the storage facility from being built, it seems to me. It will be built and we will lose any capacity to demand concessions that would mitigate what one of the callers so eloquently called the visual blight. So uh, am I right in this? Uh, I think I am, sadly. And I'd like to know, are we in a position to make a recommendation to the Zoning Board of Appeals with regard to the petitioner's demand for a reduction of the mandatory parking minimums? If so, I would like us to recommend that the mandatory parking minimums be enforced. That included a question for staff. So I'm gonna <laughs> pose that to staff. And also Mr. Leonard, you had your hand up earlier too, so I wasn't sure. Sure. Um, you can, the Planning Commission can definitely provide any um, statement or recommendation it has as it relates to a Zoning Board of Appeals action affiliated with a petition. So you could do that. To be clear, the Zoning Board of Appeals is charged by the ordinance to, to measure such variances against the set of standards that are prescribed in the ordinance. So um, I would say that your um, conversation is probably more, um, um, any communication is probably focused on the importance that you believe that in this case that the the parking is met as described in the ordinance towards that end. But the short answer is you can definitely provide any feedback to the Zoning Board of Appeals, but that decision is theirs. Um, to, before I go on, does that answer the question? Okay, great. Um, and then um, just a minor point, um, I, I don't intend to forward these, but like over the course of the meeting, I just want to acknowledge that we've probably received, received approximately um, six or so additional emails um, uh, opposing this project, some by speakers that you heard, some by others. Um, they will be appended to the packet, but it's, I think it's, um, I just want to acknowledge that those came in during this time. It's difficult for you to obviously review them during the course of your deliberation. Thank you. Commissioner Dish, you still have the floor if you have other questions or comments. Okay. Other commissioners, Commissioner Milstein. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I am, I, Commissioner Dish, you and I share very similar opinions. Um, I think this is a very sad development on Stadium Boulevard. Um, I pass through this corridor um, uh, pr pretty much on a daily basis. My office for almost 15 years was located on West Stadium Boulevard. And a lot of improvement has happened in this area over that I would say over the past 20 years, especially in the last 10 years, um, Stadium Boulevard is looking much more so like a uh, like a downtown, as one of the speakers had said. It is truly the downtown of uh, the West Side, from um, you know uh, from Arbor Farms to uh, other businesses that are around there, small businesses. Um, it's become a really great area, very walkable, and so. To see a 120 square foot storage facility built there is sad, really, really sad. Um, so what am I going to do about it? I'm going to fight it as much as I possibly can because I think this is not the right, uh, the right use for the site. Um, I am going to vote no. Um, I don't, I'm not going to be in favor of uh, rezoning it. I'm also not going to be in favor of uh, the drive through um, at this site because I'm going to fight this. Um, so this will be the first time that I'll vote against a motion to have drive through, drive through facilities. Um, so I'm going to do everything on my end to make sure that uh, this 100, 120,000, I have to keep saying it myself, square foot storage facility. Uh, that's, that's huge. So this is the wrong location for it. And I will oppose this, and I will continue to oppose this as much as I possibly can. Um, to the neighbors there, I'm sorry. This, you know, they will most likely come back with something that is uh, going to conform to our zoning code. But I promise you this: that I will uh, 
oppose any sort of drive through at this, at this um, location if there's a uh, storage facility there. And furthermore, um, as a, I think I'm pretty much the only former uh, ZBA member here, um, I, with hopefully uh, Commissioner Dish and I, will uh, prepare something for the ZBA to oppose this. Um, so they oppose and fight this for us as well. So um, I've never had such a strong reaction to something like this, but I do, because I think this is just the wrong, uh, it's wrong for our community. Thank you, Madam Chair. Other commissioners? Commissioner Gibrandel. I have a question for staff. Do we have any jurisdiction over the type of commercial in this kind of zoning? I mean, do we, I mean, do we have any leverage in this kind of case? Or, I mean, I'm under the impression that we don't have much, but explain if, if we do. Um, that's my first, I have two questions. So if you could start with, with that one. I, I, I wasn't under the impression that we can say what kind of commercial other than you know, huge trucks are going in and out of there all the time and have a big impact on traffic and things like that. So if um, if Mr. Chang or Mr. Leonard could illuminate that one for me, that would be great. That's, that's correct. Per the zoning ordinance, uh, there are certain uses that are permitted that we have listed uh, in a table. So if it's, we don't really have control over whether it's office, medical office, self-storage, et cetera. So if it's allowed in the C2B district, we really don't review what types of uses are going in there. Okay, that's that's what I was suspecting. Um, and then my other question is with the the, the parking zoning. Um, I was kind of under the impression when we dealt with this around um, some issues out at Briarwood, um, which also has big areas of parking as a zoning. That it was something that staff was. Um, I don't know, kind of parcel by parcel looking to retire that zoning designation that it felt kind of like a 50s, 60s era zoning designation that was getting um, kind of transformed as we you know, moved forward with things. Am I, am I right about that? Or, or maybe you can just further enrich my understanding of that um, zoning. Cause I know that the intent was the buffer, but I remember that we discussed it in kind of a different context um, uh, with a couple of other sites, another one on, um, I guess, for the on, down on Maple, too. So if you could tell me your thoughts yeah. on that, I'd be curious. Well, I'll start, and Chris, if you want to add anything, but um, the the conversation I think um, is it's um, I think it was it's been accurately reflected in the conversation both um, by Mr. Chang and by some of the audience participants participants as well as the petitioner in this case. Um, parking district uh, I uh, was to, and I conclude this from where you see it used in our community, it does appear that it was used very um, deliberately as a buffer, um, as a transition zone. Um, I think the conversation you're having is uh, another example of that actually is, is Briarwood Mall that was used in such a way to um, buffer or frankly, protect um, potential, um, maybe competition from new developments surrounding the mall for the benefit of the mall. And so in that case, um, that site was actually zoned. So the actual physical buildings were zoned for commercial, which provides a lot of flexibility of the type of uses that we're that are applying in a similar district as this. But then the parking was zone parking, which um, in short provides for nothing else but parking uses. Um, it does provide some construction. You can do parking garages and structures. So there is still that opportunity for um, sort of vertical um, investment in those sites, but it cannot be for sort of productive uses of, of active retail or residential or you, you name it. And so, um, so I don't, um, I think that you're reflecting that this has come up in a couple of circumstances. Um, this is one, the Briarwood Mall has come up. Um, I think it has a role in the next uh, agenda item this evening as well. Um, so um, we have not, um, I don't think the Planning Commission really hasn't 
put a stake in the ground to say that I think we should get rid of them or not. Um, I would say generally, since the creation of that district and its application in different places of the cities, a lot of our districts have um, been um, adjusted to provide some level of transit transition unto themselves through the development standards. That is, uh, as evidenced by the last petition, sometimes when you have a higher taller building, it requires a greater setback. So there, there are other ways that that could be accomplished, but um, I don't think that there's been sort of a clear public policy direction yet that these districts are inherently good or inherently bad. Um, I, think, um, I think these kind of conversations and projects are sort of um, rec recognizing, I mean, I think they evolved for similar reasons. Um, that, that was, a, that was a, a way to frankly freeze and limit, severely limit some activity in these zones um, in the city. And then is the, uh, is the height within the allowable, um, you know, height limitations in terms of the, the zoning in that area? Is it just kind of a matter of, I guess what I'm wondering is, is this what's really allows for the zoning along stadium as things get redeveloped that you can go up that high and this is just kind of the first one that's taking advantage of that? Or is this something that is um, kind of, just give me a sense of, of where stadium is heading in terms of height and whether this um, just fits easily within the requirements or is pushing the requirements or I'm just curious where that, where that sits. Uh, I'll let Chris, yeah. Chris, Chris address that. Yeah, yes. So I was, I was just kind of doing a comparison because typically on the uh, the west side of stadium, it's more zone C3. So I was just looking up and yes, both C3 and C2B have a four story, 55 foot height uh, maximum there. It is correct. I haven't seen too many. Um, I'm thinking of the Reinhardt building, I think yeah. uh, that was on the west side. That's C3 off the top of my head, but that one is not 55 feet, but it, it probably came down to they may not have had all the parking for that one and that's what limited I think, yeah i so agree yeah there's there's ways of, of looking at it that way but yes it is meeting the the height okay so in other words um as sites redevelop along stadium this height um threshold just in ter i guess in terms of the neighbors too um this is sort of the wave of the future in terms of how development will continue along stadium as sites get redeveloped and things like that. That's that's what we can expect because that's what um, that's what the, the the zoning allows, basically. And there's also a section with the C2B. So once you exceed 30 feet in height, which is typically the, the maximum height limit in a residential zone, they also have to increase their setbacks one foot. In this case they have. They have mm -hmm. met it. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I was just curious to kind of see what the what the future of stadium is. And I know some of the more recent buildings when I was just kind of doing the Google Street View, um, you know, it looked like there were some sort of taller three stories. Um, I didn't notice any four stories, but I think you're right that there's there's a certain limitation based on lot size um, in terms of being able to really get the parking that you would need uh, to be able to support that kind of square footage, I would imagine. But um, you know, I think in general, the, the direction of where stadium is that we're trying to move away from the single story uh, retail along there and be able to go up in general along that to create a street wall along um, stadium. Am I right about that in terms of kind of what the, the code is encouraging people to do with some of the changes that came along with stadium, the reconstruction and things like that? Am I correct about that or no? Once again, Commissioner Randall, that is correct. We have reduced the front setbacks to start pushing buildings towards the front and parking towards the rear. Okay. Alrighty. I just wanted to get a sense of sort of what, you know, what we allow, what we're looking for in this. And I think that um, I, I know it's hard as a neighbor to, you know, you have your vegetable garden, you have your sunsets and things like that. Um, and it's, it's difficult to be able to have things change around you. I get that. Um, I've had to deal with that as a homeowner um, a couple of times too. Um, I think the, the, the message is whether it's this 
development or another development in the future that that's probably the direction that things are going. And so just in terms of adjusting expectations, I think it's important for neighbors to understand that that's really what our zoning allows in this and whether this development is successful or not, um, that is the direction that things are going. Now, so I just wanted to be able to kind of say that out loud um, because I know that it, it is difficult I, and I, I can understand that, but I also um, just want to give people a, a sense of the realism too of what this corridor you know, may look like in 20 years or something like that, because that's really what we are uh, supporting in this area. So um, that's it for now. Commissioner Silve and then Commissioner Abrams. Uh, I have a question mainly about motion, the third motion about the subject to combining lots of 240 and 260. Is one of those lots the parking zone lots, those addresses? And what happens if they're not combined relative to the proposal and not rezoning parking? So the 2040 uh, West Stative is a very small triangular shaped lot. Uh, to the southeast, really where the bank area is. It was, it's always been used from my, from my research as parking for the dealership back in the day, but they were never formally combined. So they're going to come as part of this approval since they're going to be using it for part of the, par, the, the bank proposal, they'll have to combine them. And that's because- But it is not rezoned, it is, it, is it is zone C2B. So they're the same zoning to combine. Correct. Casted it's an administrative function to get that done, correct? Cor correct, they just have to file a form which they have just combining both lots and we'll send it to the assessor's office. Yep, okay. Um, yeah, I mean, right, I don't even know if I'm having a hard time with this. I think it's a pretty grotesque kind of project to put in a neighborhood that's growing more people friendly. Uh, it, it's fascinating to me the argument about sustainability when we are conditioning a building for consumer products that aren't actually desired to be next to people, right? There are offshoot stuff that we have to air condition and that's what we're spending building energy on. And we're not electrifying it. We're not putting solar panels onto it because it's a cost to the developer. So when I read through the A20 arguments about why some of the energy requirements that we're looking for aren't feasible by cost. And then the narrative is turned around as if this is uh, environmentally friendly because shorter distances for people to travel to store their things in an air conditioned space or a heated or a tempered space doesn't make sense to me in any sustainable realm in any long term fashion. Um, when I think about this project, uh, for 50 years, like what that means, that long-term duration of this project, uh, those are the types of things that the, a developer should have to reconcile with and understand the investment and the upgrades to that property. Uh, I think it goes similar when we start to think about what the zoning is and what the ordinance is versus what the master plan looks like and all of the vision of the master plan, the criticism of that it's dated, and what we're seeing with public participation of the overwhelming amount of engagement and feedback for the future of Ann Arbor, especially along these corridors to transit oriented development, more retail and walkable friendly. Um, we should be working to have things catch up uh, and to approve a project that is so far behind what the public wants, I just can't agree with. So. Uh, maybe I'm harsh in my in my complete filter of this, but this is a very hard project to understand uh, why there would be approval. So I'll I'll be voting no. That's it. Commissioner Abrams. Hi. Um, I have a number of things I want to comment on, but first I wanted to get some clarification uh, for Mr. Chang. So you mentioned that if the um, rezoning was not approved, it would eliminate the kind of one story little arm to the east side of the site. My question is, if the two, if the two lots remain zoned differently, is there any setback required between the, the parking per portion of the site and the C2B portion? 
I noticed that the current building is kind of set back from that line that divides P from C to B. And the root of my question is really, <laughs> if the rezoning didn't happen, would it afford the neighbors any additional buffer? That's really what I'm wondering. So it would be the, the, that finger area that was shown, which is like the one story, and it would be a, a, a portion of the two story building, but that, that P zoned width is approximately 100 feet. So if it doesn't get rezoned and remains parking, yes, they could build that four story storage building up to that rear lot line, considering that it would be still 100 feet from the east lot line that's shared with the residential neighborhood. Did I explain that correctly or understandable? I think so, but right now, I'm, right now I believe there's a 72.6 foot rear setback. So that would mean that if it was not rezoned, that would increase to 100 feet. Correct. It would provide yeah, a possibility. It would have to stay outside of that 100 foot width of the parking zone. Okay, so that would give an additional 27 and a half foot buffer. Approximately, yes. Okay. Um, I want to touch on a couple of points. Many of them are things that fellow commissioners have already raised, so I'll try to be brief. But um, I wanted to start by just talking a bit about the master plan and the role of the master plan in the work that we do. I think often this body kind of laments, I mean, as, as Commissioner Sove just mentioned, that we have a kind of master plan that maybe doesn't reflect you know, contemporary values in 2020 about um, some of the things we'd like Ann Arbor to be. I think what's really distressing to me about this proposal is that I think it, it kind of goes against the existing master plan and the master plan we imagine creating in the future. So I think one of the callers pulled out these two quotes from the master plan. It inspired me to go look at the master plan and kind of read the language myself. And I think the existing master plan, which, <clears throat> um, I, th I believe the land use plan is from 2009. Is that right? Yeah. Um, you know, mentions these things that the caller also mentioned about providing goods for residents on a day to that are needed on a day to day basis and a stronger relationship between businesses on the east side of Stadium Boulevard. It's very specific about that. The east side of Stadium Boulevard and the residential neighborhood directly to its east. And I think this project just clearly violates that. In addition, I think it goes against what Commissioner Sove was saying, which is a kind of future vision of this city that we all imagine, which brings us closer to pedestrian oriented development as opposed to pulling us further away from it. Um, that provides kind of walkable, transit accessible um, housing and development that's sustainable, that's affordable, et cetera. So <clears throat> I think just thinking about the kind of existing master plan and the future master plan, I, it's hard for me to understand how this project kind of meets either of those desires for the land use in this corridor. In terms of affordability, sustainability, um, I agree with the comments that have been made about the Kind of almost absurdity that of the suggestion that this project meets the A20 goals um, of the city. I think I noticed that, um, I mean, in addition to the to the caller's comments about the HVAC units and the reheat HVAC being not an efficient system, um, one of the things which is called out is that it um, as being kind of beneficial about the project is that it reduces the impervious area, but it reduces it from 87% to 81%, which just feels like it's not a particularly, um, you know, uh, diff it's not a difference that makes a difference. It doesn't feel like a kind of significant change that would tip this into something which would promote kind of sustainability. Um, I had a similar thought to Commissioner Sove about the kind of 50 year life of the building and thinking about the fact that this is a particular building type that could not be adapted or reused. It's very hard for me to imagine how in 30 years this could become something other than what it is. So if we imagine the future of Stadium Boulevard, as Commissioner Gib Randall described, where it feels like a downtown, it has a street wall, it has a pedestrian life, amidst all of that mixed use and restaurants and shops and offices, there is this huge storage facility with a huge amount of parking next to it, which it requires because U-Haul trucks have to pull in and out. It like doesn't fit the kind of future vision um, of that corridor. Um, I think just thinking about the special exception, exception use in the drive through I do think there's been robust discussion in this body about the kind of um, tolerance or appetite for um, future drive throughs Again, when we have these A20 goals, we're trying to reduce automobile traffic. Um, and I also, I guess, question the need for the three lane drive through um, I mean, I 
my bank has a drive through I believe it's one lane. It seems, I understand that it's an important part of transactions. I understand that right now there's a kind of desire for drive throughs because of COVID. I hope that that's not a 50 year um, demand, but, but a near term one. Um, and I guess the last thing I just wanted to say was that, I, I, you know, even if a development is kind of allowable by, by code, I, I think, or by zoning, by ordinance, I, it just seems like there would be a desire on the behalf of the petitioner to be a good neighbor <laughs> and to think about what, are, what, could they, what could they do here that would be beneficial to the neighborhood and to the people who live here. There's clearly immense opposition to this project. It, that can't be a kind of surprise to you. And I'm just, I guess, disappointed that the public participation seems to have been undertaken as a matter of, you know, uh, because you had to and not in kind of good faith where you actually were interested to know what the public or what the community would want in this location. Um, and I find it hard to believe that a 120,000 square foot storage unit, st self storage facility is the only thing in the pro forma that would make sense on this location. I have to imagine that there are other programs and other land uses um, which would be more amenable to the community and would also be possible. Uh, so for all of those reasons, I also plan to vote no. Thank you. I see you raising your hand, Mr. Havera. We're trying to do this like a normal thing, which is when we call on you uh, to come to the podium, that kind of thing. Um, Commissioner Hammerschmidt. Thank you. I feel like all of you before me said it way better than I could have. Um, Commissioner Abrams, I think a lot of what you just said, especially the last part of what you just said, was a lot of what I was having concerns with. There's a lot of opposition to this project, probably more than you or I specifically have seen in the past year of being on planning commission. And I'm just really disappointed, I guess, that these things just didn't seem to be like, dis like the neighbors just seem so against this project. I work with developers a lot in my day job and like we tell them all the time, like you need to get the residents on board or exactly this is gonna happen. Um, you know, I know we can't really pick and choose the types of developments that go in, you know, in terms of like the, the actual uses, but um, this just does not feel like, like everyone has said, I don't want to sound like a broken record, but this type of, this use, this storage facility in particular does not feel like the right use at this particular location. Um, I don't want to belabor that point, but I fully agree with um, what all of my colleagues said. Specifically, the, like one of the parts that sticks out to me is like the argument that it minimizes mileage to the storage facilities, but everybody has to drive to access this particular use. You can't walk to this particular use. And I think what we want to see along this, this uh, corridor in particular, and you can you see that, you feel that when you're on the corridor with the improvements that have been made already are things that promote walkability. I have a concern with the, the bank less than I do with the storage. Um, and I was, it was a little hard to tell from the renderings, but it looked like the drive-through, which I don't specifically have a problem with drive-throughs. I understand for accessibility reasons, like they come in handy, but it looked like it was, you were accessing like a drive-through tunnel from, um, from actually from stadium, like that West elevation, if I'm right, that that is was fronting stadium. Like that just doesn't feel like, I didn't see a door. I just saw like the sort of big cavern. Like, I don't think that's the type of frontage that we want to see. Um, you know, if the drive through is maybe like more in the back, it also looked like from one of the site plans, and I couldn't really make this out, but that there was like a curb cut for that and then another curb cut driveway. I couldn't really tell if that was on that property, but that sort of stuck out to me as, as a potential issue. Um, I'm wondering if we heard a lot of concerns about the height of the building and the, the obstruction of views and the shade that could potentially be casting onto the neighborhood adjacent. I'm, I'm wondering if a, sh if a shade study could be done, um, if it has not been done. I'm wondering if it's possible to show renderings of the building from the neighborhoods. I think, you know, you hear a four-story building. I'm having a hard time in my head of imagining what, you know, being set back 100 feet and what a four-story building would actually be blocking the view of. So I don't know if it would be possible to try to create renderings of that west facing east looking that side of the building from the neighborhood um to sort of see like in scale like what is this actually going to look like to people i think potentially it could sound scarier than it actually might look and i'm saying this because of what commissioner 
here Brandel brought up just these are the types of, of scale buildings that we could potentially be seeing and I think you know we, we might that that would we, we would want to make the streets um, feel a little bit more pedestrian oriented I think a four-story building in itself is not very tall but I think showing people what that could look like could it uh, um, alleviate a lot of that concern however I think this still gets us back to the issue of like this particular use in this particular spot that I I mean I, I struggled with this all weekend like I don't know you know like like I said like it's we can't really like pick the uses like I don't think we can deny something necessarily just because it's a storage unit like I don't or a storage facility like to staff I don't know what the process would be for that like they could come back and build this in a different configuration I assume um but yeah I just like as it stands right now like I am not in support of this project in this particular location you seem to pose Commissioner Hammerschmidt a question about a solar study. Do you was that a question? I just wanna. I don't know. I think it's I don't know, not specifically. So if you would like to, I can pass the torch on to you. If... Well, I'll ask that question of the okay. of the petitioner, um, and I've got a couple others too. So go ahead, Mr. Haver. Sorry. Uh, so. David uh, Nims, I'm going to have him answer that. But one thing to uh, Sarah, and obviously hearing a lot of the comments, um, we would like to request to be tabled if we could until January, give us some opportunity to, you know, obviously hear a lot of the concerns we've heard, uh, evaluate uh, several aspects uh, related to the project as well. Um, but obviously, you know, we're, we're hearing all the comments, but I'm going to let David uh, comment because they're the guru and how that system works my phone is breaking up can you repeat that uh david so can we, are we able to do a shade uh analysis i believe we can by a sketch up uh yeah we got we we have a number of softwares we can do a shade analysis so yeah sure thank you um so the idea of tabling, like, I think that that's really helpful. I'm going to, uh, generally, when that's requested, just so for the people who are listening in, when that's requested by petitioners, that's something we tend to honor. So I think that um, that's something that I would would welcome a motion to talk about that. But first, I want to, I got some thoughts myself um, on this. Um, to sum up and put a finer point, um, both on kind of what my reactions are to this, but also a plea to the neighbors. Um, because where Commissioner Dish started this out, and thank you, what a, what a way to start your first meeting, um, is that this is a corridor that's been on our radar for some time. Currently, the zoning here allows for mixed use. It allows for developments that are 55 feet tall. It, um, actually the amount of building the, the amount of floor area that's allowed in this corridor this project doesn't max out more building could be built here like that's what our current zoning allows for to and this is what commissioner gibrandel was saying we're just not getting it one of the reasons my guess is knowing what happened across the street and knowing the variance that's being asked for here, not about my, on our body, but for uh, that would be required of the ZBA is about the parking. And um, the, the trick is, generally speaking, we're a body that says, if you don't have to build the parking, don't. But that that all makes it tricky. Like all of this stuff works if you're thinking about these 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 um, different types of uses mixed together. Personally, I need to, I want to be really clear to, to the neighbors. I, I'm not concerned so much personally about the height or about the size because this is something that, you know, that amount of density helps to activate a lot of those spaces. Um, you may be. And so what I'm saying is when we have this discussion about zoning and transit supported development, know this. Like if you are concerned about height, you should, we need to hear your voices. We need to hear you involved. Because honestly, 
there are, this may be four stories and it's not quite maxing out the height, but it's close, but there's no windows on that building. And so honestly, you know, like in terms of height, like there could be a lot of other things built there that may be more intrusive than what this could be. And as Commissioner Milstein said, like very likely a proposal may come back that is entirely by right, where effectively there's very little discretion for us. So I just want to be really clear and make the pitch to you all that that participation in the planning and the and the zoning writing process, the ordinance writing process is really, really important because that's, you know, once we already have a code, any development proposals that we see, we evaluate according to what the rules are on the books right now. So that's the kind of pitch to the community. Um, the, the, the thing that I would say to the developer is um, I, it, I'm not like, I don't, I'm like Commissioner Hammerschmidt, I don't have like a real thing against drive throughs They're not my favorite thing. All things considered, I think having building above the drive through is some of the better use that I've seen of that. Like actually getting more building and more people in that space and making the use of the airspace above the drive through I think is clever. Um, and if we're gonna see drive throughs that's the kind that I'd like to see where it's tucked in. So I think that that is really well done. I think that Commissioner Sauvé's comments though about the, the sustainability of a storage facility, I don't, I don't have a chip on my shoulder, but I've used, had to use storage facilities before when I did not own a car and I had to write, rent a truck, right? To drive my stuff there. So like people, even though I'm a bicyclist, right? Like I'm not going there on my bicycle. To really make that case, this would need to be, that it fits within A20, though, it would need to be the most sustainable source facility ever. Like you would need to pull all, if you, to make that, like make me feel confident that I can vote on that, you would need to pull out all the stops because I don't think that this is the place for a storage facility. And that is my final thing, which is to our body, which is, this is something, it's not just the zoning along that corridor, but this is the use table, right? This is permitted in our C2 or our C2B districts. And so if we don't want, and our, their C2B districts tend to be, I don't, uh, maybe this is for staff. This is not a test, but like what other, oh, in addition to this corridor, what are the other general areas of the city that are C2B? Do you know? Maybe not. That's totally a test. Chris, do you know off the top of your head? I don't, and I could go back and look what the C, I, I'd probably look at the definition of C2B. I know it stand, you know, stands for uh, business corridor for the most part, and they're typically auto-related type trips to go to the site, but I could probably get back to you with a better answer than that. My guess is probably it's like along Plymouth. I don't know if it's along Plymouth Road or not. Anyway, this is one where it is allowed. <laughs> if we don't want it in this kind of place, then we need to change the table. Right? And again, there's nothing that we can do now. But the, you know, when we, this is, zoning is a living document and, and we try our best to fit, um, you know, to, to have it be reflective and to find all of the loopholes and things that we are gonna get that we don't like. But this is a place where you will see in commission proposed business, that we might consider whether we just take that off the table, particularly when we know what are our other C2B corridors, areas. So all that's to say, when you come back to us, you know, there's lots of information now, lots of feedback um, petitioner that you've gotten from the body. Um, I wouldn't, I'm not gonna have the same hard line personally that Commissioner Milstein has on that, but honestly, like, unless this is the most sustainable, the most sustainable storage facility ever, I just cannot see how that fits here. Given again, the character, what is in the, what is in the master plan about the character of that particular thing? Yes, it is allowed in the, in the, in C2B districts. So I recognize that, but um, the, the 
an additional question that I had for you, because I think that this is important and, and you know, you've chosen to tie these two facilities together. Um, the bank and the storage facility, why? Like why, I, I, I'm just, it's, it's interesting to me because they seem not similar, why they are both coming before, like why that combination? Because in some ways, you know, the, the, the approval of the site plan, which includes the special exception use, as well as like the physical design of both buildings is, is linked. So I'm just curious about that. So part of that is uh, looking at the, which obviously we've talked about parking, but obviously sharing in some of the parking. Um, you think that, you know, a majority of the, the, the parking at the storage facility required a very large amount, which really isn't needed. Um, we, we have provided, uh, you know, we have provided information to support that fact beyond just anecdotal from other facilities, but looking at, you know, traffic studies and, and traffic um, reports, traffic engineering uh, manuals as well on that. Uh, so it allowed a, a use that um, did not acquire a lot of, uh, again, if we received a variance in parking, did not require a, a very parking intensive use with one where you have office use and, and a retail type use, um, which do require more parking uh, there. So that's part of, part of that. Um, uh, the, the site, even though it's two different parcels, um, was owned by one owner. Uh, and so in order to, you know, utilize the FAR as, as quiet uh, um, as possible, that um, you had to utilize the area for both properties to make both projects from an FAR standpoint work, uh, as well as the, the storage facility is a quiet use uh, in that area. Um, you know, versus a, a retail type use where you, you will have more comings and goings uh, versus a, these types of indoor storage facilities where people pull into the, into the inside of the building, they're unloading inside of the building, going up and then leaving. So it's a much more quieter use. So that was why we contemplated that, uh, those use together, so. Got it. The idea of like symbiotic parking is, we need to be thinking a lot about that. I like that. Um, and where I would, where I would uh, push you on kind of the characterization of the different uses is there's not a lot of comings and goings, which means that it's not actually super, like it's not a neighborhood amenity. <laughs> um, and that the comings and goings are by trucks that have the backup beepers, which is obnoxious. Um, and so it may well be by moving trucks that have the, the you know, sound when they're backing up. So, um, I mean, and again, given the proximity. So that's all that I have. Um, any other mm, commissioner comments, questions before I entertain a motion to postpone, to table? Uh, commissioner Abrams. Well, I just a uh, point of order. If I had a question about the desire to table, should I ask that now or should I wait till the motion's up and then we'll have discussion of the motion? Either I think works, but you can have discussion of the motion. Okay, I'll wait. I'll wait. I'm still learning the Robert's rules of order here. Commissioner Milstein. Um, so I'll talk about it, Commissioner Abrams, in regards to, to that. Um, that I will not be moving for a tabling. I don't believe this needs to be tabled. I think this needs to be uh, voted on this evening, uh, primarily because uh, tabling it uh, will bring this back to us, but it's not gonna go back to the, to the residents and to the citizens for their participation to see what changes uh, have occurred and to get their feedback. So I don't see a reason to table this. My desire is to vote this down and let the petitioner start all over. So if that motion does come about, I will vote against it. Um, so I will, this will probably be the first time that I'm not in favor of tabling. Any other comments, questions, proposed motions? Commissioner Dish. Sorry, I'm just confused. So didn't we just um, 
Oh, no, 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 I'm sorry. We didn't just table, we postponed to allow more participation in the previous one. So tabling wouldn't necessarily result in time for more participation. Is that? It wouldn't preclude it from my perspective. Um, uh, it wouldn't preclude it, but I can see Commissioner Milstein's point. Yes, Commissioner Milstein. But it won't require it. True. Um, Commissioner Abrams. It, it feels appropriate to ask my question. I, I would like to hear from the petitioner more about why they are why they want to table and what they imagine they would do at that extra time. Uh, I think it gives us opportunity to go back um, and you know evaluate a few things. Um, if if need be, we can obviously go back out to the citizens. I think restarting the whole entire process from square one um, isn't necessary. Uh, I think we can evaluate here fairly quickly and, and look at, you know, taking into account all of what has been said uh, and still like the previous petitioner, uh, work within a, a time frame of postponement uh, to be able to address uh, various issues and various concerns. Could you maybe speak more specifically about what those what those concerns are as you understand them right now and how you imagine the, what the possibilities of addressing them might be? I, I want to have a sense, I guess, of. Well, I can't I can't specifically address as to, well, what exactly are we going to change? Because that's a conversation that we're going to have to have as a team, you know, hearing all of the, the concerns in regards to the, the storage use you know, the setback, the height, you know, those types, uh, you know, electrification, sustainability, all of those various items that have been discussed are all things that we can take back, we can reevaluate um, to say, well, we're going to propose this, I can't do that, because that obviously is an analysis that has to be done and looking at taking into account all of what has been said. Uh, I think that, you know, looking at that, um, gives us that opportunity to do that. Uh, if we need to reach out again to the community, we can do that, obviously. Um, I think if you, you, if you deny, and obviously we then start all over again, um, I, I don't think that is a necessity to be able to do. Thank you. Commissioner Hammerschmidt. Clarified, do you see coming back to us with a proposal that does not include a self storage facility as a possibility? I, no? I'm not, I'm not going to be able to commit one way or the other. I, I know we're going to take obviously and hear what you've said. Um, I don't think um, that if we do come back with a storage facility again, it doesn't preclude you from making, you know, a decision to deny if, if that's how you see fit. Um, if we're able to like, you know, make this a completely sustainable building and it, it, it does meet certain requirements, we would allow, allow a, you know, like that to be considered. I just can't say one way or the other, obviously, what that may or may not be, because obviously that's going to, to be something we're going to have to talk with all parties involved. You know, obviously we represent North Star uh, and Arbor Properties, but, and we're also developing the other site. So it's, there's multiple parties that are involved here that are going to have to have uh, insight into that. Yeah, I, to I totally understand that makes a lot of sense. I just want to make sure that you're not saying that it's not an option. And I'm speaking in double negatives. There is a pit, you, you do see it, you've heard the concerns. You could potentially come we back going, to us. We, are going to, we, we, we will evaluate the you know, various options that may be available um, there. Okay, thank you. Why well, don't, if it's okay, I don't know that the chair normally moves something, but can I? No, I can't. Never mind. Does anybody want to? Commissioner Hammerschmidt. I'll move it. What am I anybody? moving to table? <laughs> no, move on voting, right? To table? Because we need I'm a second. I'm making a motion to table. Yeah. Okay. And that, so that was seconded by Commissioner Dish. You, you, you looked puzzled, Mr. Leonard. Um, I just want to be clear that motion would table it to um, basically typically you would table it subject to some information you'd like to see and then whenever that happens we would then schedule it for a future meeting we would re-notice it 
um, versus postponing it to a date certain. So I just want to make sure, again, we're clear. Um, if you wanted to postpone it to a date certain, um, I would suggest either January 5th or January 19th. Commissioner Hammerschmidt. I guess I didn't understand the distinction, so thank you. And with that, I, I do, I mean, I don't see, this just, there's, there's, there's a lot. I think there's a lot for the petitioner to absorb here and to discuss here and like with the previous one running up against the holidays, like, and I, I can't speak for the petitioner, but like, I, I feel like this is a um, table and then reissue type of situation to allow for as much time as they need to actually do their due diligence. But if any of you want to argue against me, that's fine. We would be in agreement with that, just so you know. But I get just a clear, because I might have just messed up. We vote on the motion to table, right? Yes, we do. We just, we can't vote on it if there's only one person in support of it. So that's why we require a second so that we can actually vote. Now we're in discussion though of it, which we just clarified is, is legitimately a table. So this is date uncertain. So those of you who are listening, um, we don't, we can't tell you when it will be coming, but it will be publicly noticed just like this petition tonight was, just like the hearing tonight was. Any discussion? Commissioner Milstein. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, so I plan to vote against this um, uh, because I believe I'm ready to vote on it and I'm ready to vote against this project. Uh, but there's a chance that my colleagues will decide to pass this. Um, so to the people who are on the line who are watching this, please stay involved. Uh, please, uh, please stay involved because your input is what influences how we vote on this. So um, I encourage you to get involved in any which way you can. Please stay in touch with the planning department at the city of Ann Arbor. Uh, please keep an eye on this. Uh, we want to hear from you. Um, so please, when the time comes, please come back to us so that we can hear from you, uh, depending on what changes occur. And to the petitioner, if this uh, is tabled, um, I would hope that you would host another citizen participation meeting um, because you heard a lot of opinions today. We've received a lot of written communications. In my almost six years on the commission, I don't think we've ever received this much communication on a project. Um, so you, uh, you ha I, I highly recommend that you host another participation, citizen participation meeting, especially because it's a whole lot easier to do so now um, because it could be done all uh, virtually. Thank you. Any other comments? Uh, Commissioner Sylvay. I just want to highlight in the staff report, uh, part of the planning comments say that when this proposal was submitted, staff made comments regarding the 35 space parking requirement variance, rezoning from P to C2, and self-storage layout and the proposed three-lane drive-through. I'm not sure what the comments are, but I'm sure that they're similar to what we've seen and said um, about resistance to it. And then the following sentence says, the petitioner did not make substantive changes to the site layout and the responses to these comments are attached, which would be for the A20 uh, and the uh, ZBA uh, amendment. So I guess when I read into the comments that were delivered from residents, the citizen participation meeting that did happen um, and how that was reconciled into a document and the kind of follow-up uh, defense of A20 from staff comments, I'm not sure we're going to see many substantial changes since this dialogue has already happened. So I'm just putting that out there in terms of a context that I'm reading through staff report of how much further we're going to actually see this project going. So it's very hard for me to understand that a tabling of this project would see a substantial change um, into a positive impact to, to approve. That's where I stand. Any other comments? Commissioner or Mr. Leonard. Um, I just, I would just, um, I guess my, I, to your, to your decision. Um, the petitioner has definitely heard, I think, a lot of concerns from both neighbors and commissioners. I think um, from my lens, giving them the opportunity to respond to them um, um, is just that, an opportunity. It doesn't, um, it's, not, it's not transactional in any way that you um, are, have um, said that if this, then that. They have heard concerns and um, want the opportunity to see if they, I think, um, can address any of them. Um, 
giving them that opportunity doesn't, I don't think changes any of your thoughts on the appropriateness. Um, likewise, um, I would um, echo the, the comments to, um, that were made to by Commissioner Milstein to, uh, to community members. Likewise to you, if um, over that time, if you have questions about master plan language and the like, we, we can help um, provide any um, support or responsiveness to that as well. So um, I just wanted to say that the, uh, you know, the opportunity here um, to give the petitioner time to respond is not, um, it, it's certainly always in the commission's prerogative. You can vote to approve, vote to deny, or um, postpone because you need more information. So um, it's, oh, those are always avail uh, available to you. Um, in this case, I, I, I guess my point is, I don't think you, you, you don't inherently lose any of those choices by tabling at this time. I just, this is a point of clarification too. Um, there are three motions here. One of them is the final say. We have the final say which is on the drive through but is it possible for us as a body to vote against something regardless of how we vote it, city um for the other two motions uh, is that something that city council can take up i'm just not i know that they can take up a site plan approval that we deny that we recommend denial of um can they do the same on a proposal that we recommend uh, or a rezoning that we recommend denial of yes like if if the planning commission recommends denial of a rezoning that doesn't end the rezoning petition that still progresses to the city council because the city council is the determinant body in that case it goes with a recommendation against that rezoning from the planning commission but that a recommendation of denial by the planning commission doesn't stop that process it is just that a recommendation on it. I would say in the case of the drive-through, particularly the special exception use, because the planning commission is the governing body on that, um, that site plan then progressing to city council, to the extent it still included that, was not, it does no longer meet the requirements of the ordinance and it would not be a compliance site plan. Thank you for clarifying that. Any other questions on the motion to table this? effectively postpone it to a date unknown. Uh, let's do a roll call vote on that. As desired. Uh, Commissioner Mills. Yes. Commissioner Milstein. No. Commissioner Gib Randall. Yes. Commissioner Sove. Yes. Commissioner Abrams. Yes. Commissioner Hammerschmidt? Yes. Commissioner Dish? Yes. It is tabled. So those who are following this, again, you can check in with um, staff. It will be noticed the same way that this meeting was noticed um, when it comes back to us, when it is ready to come back to us. Thank, Thank you all. You. It is 1035. We have one petition still to hear. Our bylaws say that we have to vote to take up something after 11 o'clock, but we are not there yet. And once we start it, generally we continue on. The, when we reread the bylaws, let's continue on. So Mr. Leonard is bringing in the new petitioners. Um, I will go ahead and read. Do we need another five minute break, stretch break, or should we just power through? What do you, what do you, can we get the petition, like the proposal and staff report and then decide? Okay. Okay. So we are on item 9C, which is the 2111 Packard Street rezoning and site plan for city council approval. Uh, we'll have the petitioner presentation and then staff. The petitioner has up to 10 minutes. And then we, after the staff presentation, we'll take the public hearing. Just give me one moment here.
The city clerk does this so much better than I do. You're doing a great job. Thank you, Mr. Leonard. You are the jack of all trades. There are a lot of people to have to pick through <laughs> and promote, so. Okay, I believe that's everybody on my list um, that I had. Petitioners, let me know if there's any glaring errors that you see. And um, petitioners, do you, one of you have a PowerPoint that you'd like to share with the commission? I think Jeff has it all set up, I believe, in the system. Um, and Josh, is that, if you can. Is Jeff, is that, the one, is that the one you yeah. sent me? Yeah. Okay, I got it then. Okay. Do you want to just take us through it, Brett, when we ask you? Is that okay, or do you want us to share it? Um, whatever really your preference. Simple. Um, Why don't I just I'll, call, I'll call, I'll call them up. Okay. Um, let me pull that up for you here. Brett, uh, for some reason, Ryan, I think, is not hooked up. Is he on there? Ryan Tobias? No, he is. Okay. And is Sean with you, too, or no? There's someone I don't, on, on the line. Yeah, I don't know who Sean is. All right. Well, great. Sean is my, part Sean is my partner, but he doesn't have to be on this. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, so, can everybody see the screen? Yes. Yep. This is Jump Great. in. Well, we were going to have Ryan just give a quick introduction. Ryan, why don't you start? Sure. So, um, this is Ryan Tobias, um, petitioner on this site, 2111 Packard. Um, I live here in Ann Arbor, just a few blocks north of where this map you see here. This is... Um, 2111 Packard is a former grocery store built in the 1950s. Um, it's zoned the north portion is zone C3. The south portion is zone P for parking. That's going to come up again here. Um, we are seeking to rezone the whole site to C3 to build a uh, mixed use uh, 72 unit apartment property and, uh, with about 4,000 square feet of retail at each corner of Crestline and Anderson there. Um, with a parking to the east to the rear of the property. Um, this is a, um, you know, I'm going to let John kind of go through more of the specifics here, but just to give you a, a very quick sort of overall concept, this is an infill site here in a gray corridor of Packard that um, I've been going by for a long time and, and felt like it could be a higher and better use. Um, we have a little bit of advantage here being the third project to present today. This I believe complies with so many more of the things that you guys are looking for and that I'm looking for as a citizen of Ann Arbor. Um, it is a um, transit oriented type of development um, on one of the best sort of transit or alternative transit corridors in the city, the number five bike um, uh, bus line here, the bike lane in Unpackard uh, going into downtown and campus. Uh, we're feathering the needle a little bit here with parking. We've got the, the minimum as uh, allowed by zoning with the a one per unit, uh, but trying to really encourage alternative uh, forms of transit. Uh, there's an all electric building, solar panels on the roof, um, uh, really trying to uh, comply with the Ann Arbor uh, Zero um, uh, guidelines uh, ahead of time and really looking to do um, what I think has been missing so much of, which is kind of a smaller to medium scale type infill project, unlike the um, sort of the towers that have come in downtown and mainly serve students and more of the garden style, um, lower density type product that uh, ends up on the periphery of town. I think this is one of the few projects being built 
uh, out in the neighborhoods uh, that can really take advantage of the infrastructure on um, the walkability of this neighborhood um, and Ann Arbor in general. Um, and so I know we're tight on time, so I want to let uh, John Majewski take over Great. and talk about specifics of the plan. Okay, thank you, Ryan. I really appreciate it. Again, John, this is John Majewski, and thank you, Honorable Chair and Commissioner members. I really appreciate you having us tonight. I'm fortunate and you're fortunate that Ryan is our client. He is willing to do a project that fits in in scale and has worked with us and with the neighbors since the beginning. Um, this is your second time, some of you seeing this as a concept initially uh, after our first neighborhood meeting. And since then, we've had two neighborhood meetings uh, since then and have gotten a lot of input. Basically, what we're trying to do is reinforce Packard with a building that is just three stories in height and locate the parking behind the building and use that to create a buffer for the residential area behind it. As the site, as Brian said, the northern half was already C3. The southern half is this odd outlier of P parking, um, which I don't think was ever really meant to just be nothing. So we have to get that rezoned to put a building in its place. What we're proposing is to meet the parking. We'll have a total of 84 parking spaces. Four of those will be ride share parking spaces to provide for ride share. That was a big concern in the neighborhood. Uh, we will provide one Amazon loading spot within the site so that when Amazon pulls in, they can actually find a place in our parking lot to park their vehicle when they unload. Um, our trash is done internal. We've pulled that away at the request of the neighbors, so it's more centralized within the site and does not go up against their border or buffer. Uh, there is a buffer along that side. The setback is 10 feet around the three street fronts that we have. Uh, but what the neighbors have really asked is more what the distance is from the curb. So from Packard, we're 28 feet at our furthest point and 24 feet at our kind of narrowest point. Uh, that just gives them something they can actually touch and feel and look at. Uh, we went uh, and created a landscape buffer adjacent to the residential area, and that includes adding a six-foot fence for the portion that currently doesn't have a six-foot fence. Um, as well as all the landscaping that goes in there. All the parking meets all of the current and the new uh, pending approval EV parking requirements. So we do meet those and those are included in our, in our drawings and plans. Uh, we believe we meet all of the other requirements that are here from a zoning perspective. Uh, as Ryan said, the building is fully electrified with a solar roof. We'll get to that in a second, you'll see it. That will power about six and a half to 7% of the power of the building, which is amazing. Um, and one of the only one second one we've done in Ann Arbor that's been able to get to that level. We did move the sidewalks from uh, along the Northern side of the building. We've moved those back South. So the sidewalk jogs there. There's a, that's the only place we have some street trees that are really spectacular. So we want to do everything we could to avoid impacting their root zone. So that's the only place where the sidewalk kind of jogs. Um, I think what's incredible with this building is it's actually on our whole site will be at a 1.05, so just subtly over one FAR on a site that would normally permit you to do a two FAR. The building will be three stories tall at its highest point because of the elevators. It's 42 uh, feet, eight inches. We are permitted to go 80, 55 feet. Um, so we'll be well below that. And the building is only a three story building. Ryan has been gracious enough to actually allow us to do a lead silver equivalent sustainable project. We know that's important for the community. Uh, the solar system helps us get there. We are looking at, since several people had called in earlier, the idea of some of the different mechanical systems we're using. We're going to use all the tricks and trades that lead allows us. Uh, this is the roof. You can see I can't fit any more solar panels on that roof than I have on there. I do have to allow space for the fire department to move around away from the parapet. If that has not come up to you before, there is a distance requirement. I have to pull it back. Um, but it does hide everything, and it allows us to hide um, the equipment that we need for the mechanical systems as well up on the top of the roof. If you wouldn't mind clicking to the street, this is actually taking a look at um, the street front along Packard, kind of looking at the northern side of it. We tried, and one of the intentions here was not to have one big massive building, but to rather create more of a street front that was several buildings, actually about four or five buildings divided by the use of stone and brick. So the light material you're seeing are stone panels, actual stone. 
Uh, the brick infill is not brown. It's more of a terracotta where you see the terracotta color and then where you see the darker color that actually has an iron spot in it. So it's got a little bit of a purple color to it. When I say that, it's super, super subtle. Uh, the matte metal panels are black and silver and they divide the space between the buildings. This particular corner shows our largest retail on that kind of pointed part of the site plan. So we had some fun with that and created kind of a unique bay windows up on the top. Brett, if you wouldn't mind clicking to the next one. This then flips you and takes you to the opposite corner. So now we're at the south corner of the site looking at Packard. And that is also one of our retail corners. There we envision kind of a small cafe. It's about 1,500 square feet of space. Um, and that is intended to be something that has more of a mixed juice character and charm. Immediately to the left of this is actually the entry to the building, as well as the entry on the back of the building. I want to show you the next one. You get the side looking up the northern side of the building. Uh, next, this is just a little bit of a close up when you're walking on the street. So you can see the building isn't pushed right up against the street. It, we try to push it in, pull it back. So it, it varies about five feet back and forth. Next, this is actually looking at the building from the rear. Um, we've removed all the landscaping except for the required trees. So there is actually a six foot fence here and then the landscape buffer is completely full. Um, but we were asked by some neighbors to actually show it without that. So I'm showing that to you as well. Next. And here you get the other portion of the site. Again, nobody would get this view, but it's the best way we can show to kind of describe what the building looked like with um, the furthest distance. And I think there might be, it might be it. So with that, um, I'm a few seconds under the wire. So I will leave it up and try to get you guys out of here tonight and answer any questions you might have. Thank you very much. Um, Mr. Khan, anything to fill in? I thought the summary was very good, just a few notes. Um, we were impressed with a few elements that are being proposed. Some of them are code related, some of them are not code related, but I think they help tell the story of this transition from a mid-century project to you know at the forefront of a sustainable project in the in the 21st century um is some of these are things john mentioned but i just want to cover my little list um <clears throat> solid waste as john mentioned is going to be pulled away from the neighbors to the east um, a conflicting land use buffer will be constructed for the first time including a portion of a fence uh, which neighbors had asked for uh, a curb cut will be eliminated along packard which our traffic engineers love because we want to reduce conflict points um, stormwater detention will be provided on the site for the first time in history underneath a portion of the parking lot. Um, park dedication is proposed, $45,000 for uh, nearby parks. A uh, new sidewalk is proposed to be constructed on the north side of the site, which doesn't currently exist, which we think will enhance uh, pedestrian uh, activity. The solar power uh, is not something that we even ask for. This is one of the very first, usually we, we really try to push that solar and uh, sometimes we're successful and sometimes we're not. This time the petitioner came forward and offered it. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, um, the petitioner is willing to show the EV parking uh, requirements um, consistent with what a city council will be looking at shortly. The, 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 the project, because it's moved toward the sidewalks along Packard and the two side streets, is um, uh, something that we consider to be pedestrian and transit oriented. It's, it includes a mixed use component at both ends along Packard. Um, they're going to attempt to save the only regulated natural feature on the site, which is a 24 inch sycamore on the north side of the site. Uh, the petitioner is also going to be providing an additional 50 new trees on the site. Um, the all electric was uh, mentioned. And um, uh, we always like to see loading zones be provided on site where possible so it doesn't create traffic issues off site. So that's the end of my summary. Very good. Does 
can we move forward with the public hearing or do people need a five minute break? Going, I'm going. All right. So um, this is uh, this is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about the proposed development at 2111 Packard. Public comment can be made by calling 877-853-5247 and then entering meeting ID 978-3155-2451. You can raise your hand once you've dialed in by pressing star nine. There's a couple callers that are on the line now. If you'd like to make a public comment, you can press star nine to raise your hand. Um, and as always, please mute any background noise, move to a quiet area, um, and state your name and address at the beginning of your comments, please, and limit them to three minutes, please. Caller with the phone number ending with 542. Um, you have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Uh, I'm sorry, we might have gotten a little bit of an overlap there. Uh, could you tell me wh who'd been authorized to speak, which phone? You are. Go ahead. Oh, okay, thank you. Hi, we are Kate McCune and Lyndon Kelly at 1912 Anderson, and uh, Lynn's on speaker with me. And we've been following along with this project since the beginning and have been um, very impressed with the developer's commitment to fit into the community. And I think at this point, um, in the materials that have been supplied, the only question we have that seems um, not complete information is the traffic impact study. That uh, if you go back through all the materials that the neighbors, when they were raising questions, our big concerns were uh, traffic moving into the neighborhood uh, when there's a backup going on to Packard and turning of an extremely, extremely walkable neighborhood with more and more children into uh, a neighborhood that suffers some of the problems that uh, Jewett and Rosewood and Harps do as cut throughs to South Industrial. So in the traffic study, I see that the city has summarized it, but um, I have a lot of specific questions about it, and I'm wondering if that actual study is available to the public to review and then to talk with you about? Or should I just keep talking till the end and you'll answer that at the end? Keep talking, because, yep, uh, we'll, we'll pull this up during our, uh, during our uh, discussion of it. Okay, so um, we're curious about when this study happened, how long it went on for, uh, you know, it's happened during COVID. Is that an accurate study? And, um, at what locations? Was it done at both Crestland and Anderson? And then finally, I did want to, if you guys can go back, not right now, but to the 3D views, the corner at Anderson is an angle that is by Fraser's Pub. And right now it is already uh, periodically kind of dangerous to pedestrians and cars. And with the setbacks, it is going to come even, whoops, you can't hear me. No, we can hear you. Please continue okay. on. Uh, and with the uh, way the setbacks are changing, which we're fine at, but the visual that residents have now leaving Anderson onto Packard will be significantly re reduced as the building moves towards Packard. So 30 more seconds. Okay, so the residents are fairly concerned about the quality of the Packard, of the traffic study, both in terms of actual density, um, the Anderson corner, and whether or not it may be necessary to try to review um, how traffic moves out of the project so that it, it is safer for the neighborhood. Other than that, we've been happy with it. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, and thanks for staying up to call in. Caller with phone number ending with 431. Caller ending with the phone number, <laughs> the phone number ending with 431. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Great, thank you. Can you hear me? Yes, we, we can. can. 
Great. So my name is Kara Patterson, and I reside at 1604 Anderson Avenue, which is next door to the plan building. Um, I would like to <laughs> admit that this is the first time I've seen the plans. I'm a renter at this uh, address. Um, but thank you to the petitioners for your presentation and to the planning committee for the opportunity to speak. My concerns revolve around sort of relations to this particular building, but also around greater housing issues in Ann Arbor. So first, the petitioners propose that there will be shopping along the bottom of the building. But the George, which is just a few blocks south of um, where we reside, has shopping space that sits completely empty. I would also like to echo what the previous caller had just mentioned about being able to see. It's quite difficult to get out onto Packard from Anderson Avenue, so that is a question I also have. Um, but in terms of the shopping, I was interested in what's going to be different about this building. And then second, in terms of the greater rental issues of Ann Arbor, what are the prices going to be of, this, of these apartments? I've personally moved around the country because of my own work and schooling. In an arbor is relatively expensive in that it has a medium rental price that are $200 above the national average. Um, so my concern is of greater issues regarding the affordability of these new housing units in an arbor. Um, for instance, the most recent poverty rate in Ann Arbor is actually 22.6%, which is basically one in every five resident lives in poverty. While the median income is quite high relative to the national average, this number hides deeper um, income issues that are present in Ann Arbor and that if we uh, break down median income by renter versus owner status, we can see that over half of renters, or 53.4% of renters, have a median income below $50,000 $50, per year, compared to only 18.6% of those who own. Um, and this, these rates are quite drastically different if we even look at a lower um, income of $25,000 per year of renters. So my, so my questions basically resolve, uh, or revolve around sort of the affordability as well as the shopping. And like I said, to echo the previous caller in terms of the ability to see when you're turning onto Packard either way. So thank you so much. Thank you. I see a couple more callers that are on the line. If you'd like to raise your hand, you do that by pressing star nine. Caller with a phone number ending with 364. Caller with a phone number ending in 364. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Yes, my name is Steve and I live at 1606 Anderson Avenue. And I happen to own the rental property that the previous caller called in from. I live next door to it. Um, it sounds as if this is meeting the parking requirements, which is a concern for me. I see 119 bedrooms and 80, 84 parking spaces. Um, and I'm not eager to have Anderson and Crestland become the overflow parking lots for this unit. Uh, so that's a concern for me. Early on with some of the preliminary meetings, it seemed to me as though it was up in the air as to whether or not these were going to be apartments or potentially condominiums. And um, uh, for what it's worth is the person that lives essentially next door to this, I would prefer condos. And I think along with what Sarah mentioned, the previous caller, as well as some other people that I've spoken with, there's some concern relative to the George that sits down the street. All their retail is empty, and I don't think they've even filled up the apartments yet. I know they're insanely or they're extremely expensive, but um, I have to wonder if Ann Arbor's getting a little saturated with that type of unit, that type of product. Um, and I guess that's it. Thank you. Thank you. The callers that are on the phone, if you'd like to make a public comment for the public hearing, it's star nine to raise your hand. Caller with a phone number ending with 844. Caller with a phone number ending with 844. 
four four. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. Hello. Hello. Am I on? Yeah, you go are. ahead. Uh, Kim Walda, 1468 Rosewood. Uh, I've looked at uh, the architectural plans and I'm very concerned about overflow parking in regards to individual occupants of this building having enough places to park far as a second car, people coming to visit, and where are you going to put all these people other than our side street? And the other thing is the parking lot is arranged in such a way that there's no direct drop off to the entrances. Um, I, I heard the part about eliminating the front uh, pull in, but uh, it's you're going to be in a parking lot that's jammed with delivery people and not be able to get people dropped off and pick up parcels and vice versa. Um, it, it just doesn't sound like there's enough parking that's going to create a problem for all the neighbors around here. Uh, that's my big concern. That in the flat face of this uh, create, uh, creates an amplification of all the road noise back towards our neighborhood. Uh, and I don't think that's been addressed. Uh, I'm very concerned about that because in the summertime, we like to open our windows. But with that kind of noise, you know, you're going to be forced to keep your windows closed. Thank you for allowing me to to uh, address this. I would like to have more information and in writing on these meetings. I've had two postcards. If I didn't uh, dig into this further, I, I didn't see any packets or anything else that was promised. Thank you very much for your time. Thank you. Caller entering, caller with the phone number ending with 112. Caller with the phone number ending with 112. You have three minutes to address the Planning Commission. To unmute, you might need to press star six. Caller ending 112, go ahead. We can hear you, or you're unmuted. Well, caller with the phone number ending with 112. We can hear you if you'd like to address the Planning Commission. Yeah, this is Gary Rockman. Can you hear me? Sorry, I'm getting a lot of... Yes, we, we can. can. You might want to turn off the stream of this. I think that's probably one of the issues. Okay, thanks. Uh, yeah, this is Gary Rockman, and I own the property diagonal across the street at 2204 Packard. And I appreciate the uh, presentation and the, the efforts that the, de that the developers are doing to improve the site. My concern is about the retail. I would love to have more retail there. What happens if you can't, I'm concerned what happens if the developer cannot fill the retail space, what happens at that point? Obviously the George is sitting, just kind of listing in the breeze over there and we're all concerned about that. So will that become residential? Um, and yes, yeah, similarly, if these are apartments, will they become condos or what what is the ownership and what is the long term i guess what is the developer planning long term in terms of ownership for the property um but i love the look of it and i hope it's a great improvement to the neighborhood but yeah you know, we would love to just get more retail along the corridor thank you thank you there's one more phone if you want to raise your hand, it's star nine. All right. 
I'm going to close the public hearing then and read the proposed motion. The Ann Arbor City Planning Commission hereby recommends that the Mayor and City Council approve the 2111 Packard C3 Zoning Site Plan and Development Agreement. Moved by Commissioner Milstein, seconded by Commissioner Abrams. Discussion. Commissioner Abrams. Are we going to take a break? Would you like to? All right. Um, let's take five minutes again. Okay. So that by my clock, it's 1112 that we will come back.
to order then. Commissioner Abrams, did you want to start the comments or? I can, sure. Great. Um, I mean, I think there have been a number of questions which were raised in the public hearing that I wanted to give the petitioner a chance to address. Um, in particular, concerns around overflow parking and cut through traffic, um, around sight lines, and around the George. And I know that that's a topic that was addressed at the, particip the public participation meeting, but it seems like it's it would be worth just repeating again um, those items. Thank you. And I can list them one by one if that's too confusing to just rattle them off. I will address the George comments and I'll let either Lori or John talk about um, sight lines and traffic is Lori still on um yeah I see her there yes. okay I'll, I'll i'll start with just the george just a, a, some general comments on that obviously um that's come up uh, ad nauseum from the very first community meeting and and the um, uh, planning commission working session that we did on this some time ago to now and you know i, I said this before and we basically have been trying to do to um, design the anti-George with this project. Um, and that, that means kind of, you know, pushing the retail up to the street, um, you know, and, and really the main thing is honestly is, is doing a smaller, um, more efficient, um, cheaper project both to build and to be able to rent to. So, I mean, the question that came up about retail, the biggest thing is they have 28,000 square feet of retail that they're asking, I think something like 36, $38 a foot all in. For rent, you know, we're we're we have four thousand square feet where we're looking at twenty six dollars a foot all in. Okay, so that I mean, if they were if they had that, it would be full. It would be it would be full with wonderful, you know, neighborhood type tenants, which is what we're going for. Um, so we're not overly concerned uh, about that. That it's all important to note too that that building is is has been foreclosed on and still owned by a lender and has in, has been in foreclosure this whole time. So it's a I think the long term that that project, you know, if you look back 10, 15 years from now, people that don't know the story won't see it the same way that we do now. We've we'll lived through it. Um, it's in a still a continuing kind of precarious situation that makes it difficult for that retail to lease, for example. Um, but anyway, we're we're trying to learn from all the mistakes that they made and do this much better um, and 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 less expensive um, all around. And I think we're going to have a lot of success in, in that department. Um, so that's kind of how I address the George. Um, as it relates to uh, traffic parking, uh, Lori from Wade Trim is on, uh, who did the traffic study, so maybe she can comment to that. Um, and Actually, maybe I'll, maybe I'd like to follow up on those questions first, and then we'll move oh, sure. to traffic. Um, Sorry, go ahead. Yeah, and sure. I just maybe two other things that came up relative to the people, um, the community members who called in. So, one would be long-term plans for ownership, mm -hmm. um, and the other would be, you know. What what is a plan B um, if you couldn't fill the retail? I guess lower the price or <laughs> yeah yeah you know um, I, so the long term the plan here this is a something that we we do intend to keep it apartments uh, rentals we don't have any plans to convert it to to condominiums at any point um, we do intend to hold the property long term uh, I, you know we intend to be the owners of this five ten years from now this is sort of a uh, backyard kind of a, a, a something a community sort of play for us and something that I want to be a part of for the long term I mean you never know what could happen down the road but that's the intention and as far as the retail uh, we really think it's of it as an amenity to the building and to the neighborhood and so um, I have no plan B like you said would be reduce the rate I mean well you know it, it, we would we want to fill it. Um, it, it converting to apartments is I guess you could do that, um, but it, we would hold that. I mean, retail demand would have to go to negative infinity for us to, to pursue that pursue that strategy. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so maybe we can shift to park to traffic then. I think specifically there were a couple questions. So one is, um, I hear members of the community community wanting some reassurance that the traffic study thought about traffic levels pre COVID. Um, 
and I think they have concerns around overflow parking, which I guess is not a traffic study concern. So maybe that is a separate topic. I I'll let Lori do the park or the uh, traffic part. Okay, thanks. Um, uh, I'm Lori from Waitrim. I'm a traffic engineer, and I can discuss um, the amount of traffic, the issues, or the concerns with how much traffic will be added um, based on the new developments in this site. So the pur purpose of the traffic study is to determine impacts that the proposed development um, would impose on the street network. Um, the study area was actually coordinated with the city engineer um, and was approved by the city and included the intersections of Packard with Stadium, Anderson, Crestland, and Jewett. And luckily traffic counts were available um, that happened to be taken prior to the pandemic. Um, and the city actually provided us with those counts that we used in the analysis. Um, and those counts were used to develop the traffic models for existing conditions now, and then with proposed conditions with that additional traffic. Um, and based on the number of housing units, the square footage of the other developments, um, we used a very conservative value of vehicle trips and generated those based on standard practice, um, the ITE trip generation manual data. And we found that currently the, all the intersections operate at acceptable levels of service. Um, Anderson, Crestland, and Jewett actually operate at level service A, which is uh, very good. The, the ratings are kind of like a report card, A to F, A being the best. Um, stadium was operating at level service C in the morning peak hour, D in the PM peak hour, which is D is actually still acceptable level of service. Um, so that's that was um, our baseline condition. Um, when we added the additional traffic based on uh, the trips generated, um, we found that there was minimal impacts um, during the peak hours. It was a, about three seconds or less per vehicle average delay that was increased um, at each of the intersections and they still are expected to operate at level uh, levels of service a at anderson crestland and jewett um, and then the c and d at stadium um, we also looked at the crash history in the area of the site um, just we'd like to make sure that there isn't an existing safety issue um, or one that might might get worse once you add that additional traffic um, so we looked at the crashes just in that Crestland Anderson area in the past three years. Um, it was found that there really isn't a safety issue. There were three rear end crashes um, and two side swipe, no pedestrian or bicycle crashes and um, no serious injuries in the area. Um, as far as the parking, I think, um, or if there's any questions on traffic, yeah, that yeah, I, Thanks. I can jump in too. It's John. I just okay. wanted to add that we we did intentionally on Anderson pull the corner of the building back there so you can see how it's chamfered the point on the first first level. So it's it's well over 36 feet. It's way beyond the standards that are required for that 45 degree angle view corridor. Plus on Anderson, you're pushed out further as you're you know pulling out. So your view is enhanced. And on Crestland, we well exceed what we're required to have as well for the angle um, for that view. So that was something we took into consideration. I can certainly understand how it's hard for somebody to understand without seeing the building there. Um, but one of the benefits we get is what I had mentioned earlier, it's that we're set back so far from the curb already. There's just a lot of kind of land there that helps us. So we are pushed back from those areas and I just wanted to make sure that everybody understood that. Um, the road noise was considered, that's one of the big reasons why we broke the building up and selfishly enough, that was for us as well as for, you know, the benefit is for anybody with a building that's broken up using a diversity of different materials, including masonry with joints and things that will help to effectively 
defer the sound in different directions. That was all part of the consideration for the way that this was laid out. And I think Jeff had mentioned, you know, when it comes to traffic, one of the best benefits for the neighborhood is that there's no longer that midpoint, mid block along Packard, which would cause more traffic concern because there was another curb cut interrupt, interrupting the traffic flow. So I, I don't get too many projects like this where I've got two corners and I'm pulled back really the appropriate distance from both corner um, from the, from the, the more um, busy street. So overall, I think that that really was a benefit. You know, parking is a tough question. I know that's gonna come up. And there's some of you I know on this particular planning commission that would say, you meet the parking, you're all set. And then there's some people who are gonna probably say, why do you even need all that parking? And then there'll probably be a few people who think, why do you, why don't you have more parking? Where do the guests park? And you know, the real answer to that is diversity in the way that we work this out. And so having the ride share spaces, which is really probably the most important thing and is not actually something that's required. Um, and having it midpoint, mid center of our site is probably the number one thing that we can do to benefit everybody. We'll work with Uber, we'll work with Lyft, we'll try to get a point once this project is named and set so that we can drop a pin on those ride share points to help them even avoid then going out into the street because I know that's a concern for the neighbors. But honestly, nobody wants to believe it but we see parking demand going down, not up. People don't drive as many cars as they used to. And I know that's hard for people to believe, but it's true and the facts show it. And this project is just properly parked. Commissioner Abrams, did you get all of your issues taken, uh, answered? Um uh yes for now i'm fine if i have more i'll come back thank you commissioner gibrandel can i just say thank you because you are hitting so many of the things that we are trying to go for and it is just incredibly refreshing for me as a commissioner to be able to review a project that is just firing on so many pistons at the same time um I'm really impressed with this and the way that you all have pulled this off. And um, I understand there's neighbor concerns. I, but I, you know, for me, in terms of what I see us reviewing on this commission, I just feel like this is an exemplary project and I am fully behind what you're doing. Um, I did some really quick kind of aerial searches and, and things from their road view and those streets are not parked up. Maybe they are on football Saturdays, something like that. But in general, I think there's plenty of space for guests that come. And it's frankly, in my mind, impervious surface that's not being used in a regular way. And I think that it's totally fine to have, you know, guests in there and that we don't necessarily have to have everything filled up on that site. It's on a bus line. You have all these other ways of be, being able to handle that. So um, the thing that I want to know is how you're making it all work, frankly, in terms of what, this is what we're asking other developers to do. And um, everybody is saying it's hard. I know it's hard, but I am just curious, like just in terms of um, how you're accommodating all of these things together um, to be able to make it work in terms of the math, frankly, in terms of what you can charge for rents and, and then what, you know, what you're able to pull off. So I think it's important for us as commissioners to kind of understand your reality to see the different things that you're balancing are around this. And um, so I'd just be curious about uh, what the process that you went through to figure out like the electrification and the solar and all those uh, and all the other elements of, you know, the massing and mixing it up. And there's just so many things I like about this project, but especially in terms of the sustainability elements, I am just curious how you kind of um, were able to make that all work with this scale of project. Well, I've been playing the lottery quite a bit recently and hoping <laughs> to figure out a way to pay for it all. But um, well, yeah. The honest answer is there's a couple of different things. One is that it, you know this is a little bit more of a passion project and it's a longer term type of an investment than um, I think that we've seen in so many of the projects that you guys probably review on this board. 
um, you know, it, 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 that are from a, a just a different development model. And I'm not criticizing that. It's just it's just the way of the world. But we're taking a longer term lens on this than than probably most, and so that that helps. Um, other factors are there are some um, some grants and some tax credit stuff available. Um, uh, like DTE has a credit program for the um, for the charging stations, for example, that helps make that financially feasible. There's some obviously some some credits available for for solar, not really enough to make it work, but it helps. Um, we're pursuing PACE financing for this, um, you know, which is which is something if you're not familiar with, uh, uh, it, relatively new to Washtenaw County, but. Uh, um, uh, it's a, a different layer of financing that sort of acts as a tax assessment, actually, but helps to, um, it, again, it's just another thing that helps to make the numbers work a little bit. So it, it's 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 doing a lot of um, extra layers and, 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 and some complicated and time consuming things to try to make it all work. Um, and then also just having a much longer term view of, of, of this project and, and the world than I think you know, most developers do. Oh, I appreciate that. I'm also curious if you are having um, renters pay for their own utilities or if you are paying the utilities and, and part of the, the solar is kind of, you know, that there's a return on investment for you or is it like, how are you, I'm just curious how you're structuring that. The uh, it is the intention to have at least the electricity be tenant paid. So it's not a really a, a savings to us. It's more of a, you know, I, well, I mean, it, it all comes out of the same thing, right? I mean, if your if your rent is X and your utilities are Y, it's you know it might as well be one payment. So even if we're paying it or they're paying it, it's it's still a savings. And 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 more than that, I think too, just from a marketing standpoint, and you know, Ann Arbor and 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 renters here and and citizens and residents of Ann Arbor are they're conscious of this type of thing. They're environmentally conscious. They have choices. Um, and, you know, we just think that it's something that people are going to get behind. And again, I mean, just to we're clear, I mean, you know, as John said at the beginning, it's, it's maybe 7% of the building energy. I mean, unfortunately, solar isn't to the point where it's making this huge, it doesn't move the needle as much as we'd love it to, right. but, but it helps. Um, and every little bit helps. So That's it for me for now. Sorry, uh, Commissioner Dish. Just a quick question. Um, what's the fence made out of? It's a board on board cedar fence. Okay. So just pretty straightforward, but it looks good on both sides, it allows it to breathe, the air to go through. We really want that for our landscaping as well as the neighbor's landscaping. Excellent, okay. And yeah, I just wanna underscore what you said about cars. You know, you're, these are studio, one bedroom and two bedroom apartments. This is not housing families. This is the kind of project that we will see fewer people having cars in and choosing not to have cars, so. Commissioner Milstein. Thank you. Um, so first question I had for Mr. Khan, um, so somewhere along the lines, there's something in the staff report, but I heard, um, and I'm actually not sure at this late hour who I heard it from, that um, the, so part of, I know that part of parcel is zone P for parking. Does, does this petition require any sort of um, rezoning of that P parking? Yes, part of, the, part of the petition is a rezoning from P to C3. So do I, did I miss that in the uh, in our motion? Do we have a do we have a, as part of that in our motion that we're rezoning? Is that I can is read the motion if you'd like. No, I I just want to. Is, does it say that we're rezoning? So we're approving the site plan and rezoning. It it's says C three zoning. So it's not explicit that it's rezoning, but it's C three zoning. Because typically we have two separate motions and it looks like this went all into one motion. Um, and is that is the reason for that just because we're trying to tie the site plan and the rezoning into one? That, that was the general idea. I'll let Brett um, 
comment further if he if you'd like. Yeah, I don't I don't think there's much um, science to it. They were combined to a single motion. They could be considered separately. The intention here is no sort of conditional zoning or anything. So to be clear, yeah, the, as part of this action would be to rezone the C3 portion or the parking portion to C3. And then the corresponding site plan would meet all of the development regulations for the site. Okay. Um, coming from our last discussion, so I believe C3 allows storage facilities. So my only question is, um, and we have, I sort of feel like we, we rehash this on a regular basis. If we rezone it and then developer chooses not to move forward with the project, we've just rezoned it and we've taken away any opportunity to potentially have any say on what happens with that parking. Is that a fair statement? Mr. Leonard? Yeah, if it's rezoned to C3, the C3 would govern. Um, if um, I'm purely speculating though, based on the last conversation, I could see some conversations about our permitted use table in the future. Yes, very much so. So is there any way uh, to tie the, uh, the zoning and the site plan together? Not under this framework. I mean, we have other mechanisms that could do that, um, you know, such as plan unit development and the like. Um, as a as a rezoning and site plan here, um, I, I, it's it's not easy to do. Um, um, if the petitioner wanted to seek um, another mechanism, such as uh, um, whether it's PUD or a conditional zoning or something to that effect, we could consider that, but in its current state, uh, I don't think it would be appropriate to consider the zoning dependent on this. You, uh, if, if you wanted to consider those separately, we could definitely structure the motions separately. Nope, I'm totally fine. I just wanna make sure that my colleagues are aware of this and it's partly because of the last um, item that was on our agenda. That's where my concern comes from is, you know, all of a sudden there's a storage facility. Um, and I'm sure the neighbors wouldn't be happy about that. So just bringing that up, um, in regards to the actual site plan, the look of the building, um, I'm very much in favor of this. Um, it looks great. I think this is the right use for the site. Uh, for years and years and years, I've driven by the site thinking, wow, somebody's got to do something to this sometime soon. And I'm happy that the time has finally come. Um, and John, thank you for not making it brown, all brown. Um, you've done a great job in Ann Arbor with all of your projects um, you. to sort of make them look very interesting. So I appreciate um, all that you do for our community to make us uh, prettier. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Commissioner Hammerschmidt and Commissioner Sove. So I will follow directly on that. I also very much appreciate the interest in the facade. I'm not an architect, but I thought that the renderings made it look a lot more interesting than just sort of like a flat faced building um, going along Packard. I really like this project. Um, I like everything that you've, you've said about it and you know wanting to contribute to the neighborhood. And I appreciate that it's a passion project. I appreciate that you brought up solar and EV and electrification without us having to say it. Um, I really appreciated the, the way that you like laid out and presented to us the public comments that you've gotten and your responses to them I thought were very thoughtful, particularly I know there have been a lot of questions about the George. Um, and I think that the way you guys answered them to those questions tonight and both in the, in the public comment that we saw makes a lot of sense to me. Two minor yet potentially impactful um, questions that I just wanted to hear your thoughts on there's is there outdoor space in this? I saw like a little section of grass behind the building. Um, was curious like if that's if that is like lawn, if you were thinking of programming. I was just trying to, I was looking at closest parks um, and there's one across Packard, which you'd have to cross Packard and then the closest one is like a 10 minute walk away. So I was just curious like if you, what you were thinking in terms of like access to any sort of outdoor space for the residents. Well, I think we we, de we definitely have that small area, but that's really pretty limited. I'm not going to try to push that and sell that as a big landscape area. I mean, for us, what we're really trying to create is this kind of urban residential feel 
where we're part of a community in a neighborhood that we can share the parks and use the parks and not it, it honestly it's very different than if you're down in an urban area where you just have pavement right up against everything so it's urban but it's this transition and and that's really a big part of what we'll be selling have you considered anything like a bench or anything so that people you know if they just need to get outside and this just like strikes me a lot like just during this COVID and feeling like you're trapped in your house and like I understand you can get out and walk around in the neighborhood but if somebody just wants to like get outside for 10 minutes just maybe yeah, consider think, like adding in some sort of seating I think we could add some seating in there Ryan that sounds like a great idea yeah yeah I think we could I mean we have some areas that probably just haven't been articulated as much yet that we could probably yeah. address um I like that idea. Yeah, I don't see any reason why we couldn't do that. Well, excellent. Um, and my other thing is just sort of regarding, I feel like I bring this up with a lot of projects, but this the, the stair placement, um, you know, this is a three-story building. People could easily just take stairs up to their unit rather than use an elevator, which often, you know, we see you walk into a building, that's the first thing you see, and the stairs are sort of like tucked away behind like a fire door. And so people just naturally gravitate to the elevator. But particularly again with COVID, I think people probably, and hopefully by the time this is built, that'll be gone. Who knows if there'll be another pandemic. Um, but since it's such a, since it's just like a, a short building, like walking up two flights of stairs is not outside the realm of possibility for people. If the stairs look like attractive stairs to take up. So I guess my question is, what are you envisioning? for the stairs? Is it behind a fire door or is there a possibility to like open them up, make them a little bit more attractive and easy for people to just default to that. Yeah, I think there's a possibility. I mean, I think what we what we actually had talked about was really creating a stronger graphic in the lobby to promote that. It, I mean, honestly, it's a great comment and it actually works really well here. Three stories, it's perfect. Most people will probably just take the stairs. So definitely it's something we're going to have at the main stair where the two elevators are, but you'll get further down to that more remote stair. And we can still work to promote that as an access point as well. Great. Those, I think, are my only comments um, for now. But I just, I really appreciate all of the work that you guys have put into this, and I'm excited to see this built. Commissioner Sobe. So I'll get nitpicky just because it is a great project, and maybe tagging right off of Commissioner Hammerschmidt. And I, when I was reviewing the project, I was kind of betting that stairs would come up. Um, part of it is actually the bike uh, room and that there's like one unit straddling between the stair and the bike room. And I guess I'm curious, because uh, a lot of these have uh, individual entries to the units. Are there enough bike spaces in that bike room for all the units that have common corridor, or like one per unit? I guess I didn't do the math myself. Yeah, I think we act, I don't have it right here. I know we exceeded, I had looked at it. So yeah, we're, we're definitely ahead of the game on the number of required parking spaces, including the walk-ups that we have. And I never really brought that up, but that is kind of one of the unique things about some of those units is their direct access walk-ups, which is really kind of fun and interesting. And it also helps activate the street mm -hmm. in the neighborhood. But yes, we exceed the parking requirements okay. um, for bikes. And that it's just like in that traffic wedge of, you know, people coming in, maybe from the retail from the back, bikes coming in, deliveries, the trash going out. And I think it's similar to like, how can you make that bike room as functional as possible for the residents so it doesn't get at that pinch point and it's so much easier for people to want to use it. Um, so it's just one of those little nitpicky things that it, it, it seems like there's some easy potential and I know that these plans are just kind of giving us the, the rougher layout. Um, yeah, no, we, we'll definitely look at that. Yeah, that lot, lobby leasing area that is kind of opens to that area is all kind of yet to be designed. I think there's some kind of, you know, along with the stairs, uh, you know, I think there's a, a real opportunity. I, I, I personally think the biking aspect given, I mean, I'm an extremely frequent biker on the Packard bike lane, I, I think is a huge element in this project. So I think we'll, to really try to emphasize that you know more than just have it be you know just a tucked away bike room so that's something that we've discussed before and we just haven't given enough detail to that little part of the building yet it's just you know it's just sort of blocked off at this point as we work through a more detailed site plan totally i think it's a great potential and maybe like there's a coffee shop and a bike shop 
It's now not we're talking. The room would be ideal. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Um, I, I don't think anybody else is on the line, but in terms of asking like where will visitors park, there's street parking for a reason. And that's for visitors to houses and to apartments. Like homeowners don't own the street in the same way the whole community does. And so I'm not really concerned about what overhaul parking might look like on the ebb and flow of visitors. Uh, and I just wanna like put that out there and say that. Like when we talk about street parking, uh, the people who are there now don't own it. So. <laughs> Visitors, I'm definitely not worried about. Um, and then I think, you know, concerns with the George, I'm not worried about either because this is so um, street front centric. The George completely is inverted, right? It's a concave development that everything is so off the street. And I think that this is also so much closer to all the other things as you get towards stadium. So I'm really excited to just see how it starts to stitch these things. And hopefully we just see more projects like this along the corridor that finally meet up with the George and the George can realize its full potential. So fingers crossed for like the next five years of movement in this corridor and what TODs might be able to do uh, for this, you know, projects like this as well. So I'm in support of it. Thanks you guys. Other comments? I think I'm last then, which is to say, at first I want to ask a question about, uh, maybe you said this when you talked about building electrification, what are you doing for HVAC? For right now what we're using for HVAC is we are looking into this idea of the heat pump system that the individual who called in would be extremely excited if we could do it. Um, we're right on that transition edge where it's tough. So I'm, we're very open-minded to it. I, I don't even think we think it's, it's necessarily a cost issue. It's, is it going to function the way that we need it to when it's minus 20 degrees out? So it's something we're looking at. And that would be the best system that we could do to do that. But, but it is going to be based on individual heat pumps. Um, and that's what we had placed in the center of the roof up on the top of the roof. Got it. Thank you very much. And this is something that we may well, there's a couple of us on this phone that may well follow up with you on that, just Great. to better understand that. And also, um, again, this is the kind of project that we, that I, I don't want to speak for all of us, love to see. Um, and to see if there are other elements of our code that might be hindering us getting more of this, not just your, like what you shared with us about the, the, um, uh, your approach to development, right? Your, how long you're, ex you know, how you see this investment. Um, but anyway, that's not for 1145 at night. Um, thank you, uh, Commissioner Milstein for pointing out that this is a rezoning. And I often am the person who says, what is the worst case scenario that comes out of this, right? I want this project to succeed. I don't want you to have to sell the project to somebody else. You don't wanna to have to sell the project to somebody else. Um, one of, and so uh, kind of, what would worst case scenario look like for particularly for that part? The fact that you're only rezoning half of it and it is not the uh, asking for rezoning of half of it, and that it is um, the 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 worst case scenario. I think, from a neighbor's perspective, if I may, is not just that like they don't get a building that has all of these fantastic elements. That again is not the norm that we hope becomes the norm, but that is not the norm right now. Um, but is also, I think, a, a height concern. That's something that didn't come up because you mentioned you're not maxing it out, right? Um, and so I would say I'll, I'm generally the person who would strongly recommend that you think about tying some element <laughs> of where you're not maxing out that code to your rezoning request. Uh, that is something that would have to be offered from you. I mentioned this um, because Commissioner Dish is, you know, you're gonna have to see her again. And in case that is something um, that is, that you think is valuable, like I'm just gonna put it out there that that's, we've not been burned by you before. But we've seen this where there has been, you know, rezonings and and what people rezone to is not panned out and it's come back to bite us. And so 
I don't know how that fits in and I'm not pushing it here. I will vote for this because I think that this is a fantastic project. But I just wanna put that out there and also kind of let other people, if anybody else wants to weigh in on that. Commissioner DeBrandel. Let me just say, I feel like it's a little bit on us if we don't feel like we want that use going on in the zoning. I mean, it's like, that's kind of on us to figure out what's in the table. And if we don't want it, <laughs> And that's kind of seems like it's our job, you know, and, and maybe it's because it's next to residential or, you know, whatever it is, but that feels like that's more, you know, what we should be doing about what we feel like supports, you know, the, the kinds of uses where we have that zoning. So I don't know, I guess that's, I, I, I feel like that it's coming up in front of us, you know, twice tonight, but um, I, I think that's, I think that's our responsibility in some ways. And to be clear, I wasn't not talking about that use because that's something that I hope we can take care of like pronto. But it was more, there's lots of things that when you rezone something from parking to C3, there's lots of uses that are possible, but also including residential uses, just like this one, but a residential use that's not 40 feet tall, that's 55 feet tall. So, Commissioner Milstein. Uh, Commissioner Gibrandel, I completely agree with you. It is on us, but I also, uh, since we have a new council member representative with Commissioner Dish here, it's also on city council and our master plan. And uh, Commissioner Dish, you, I, I, this is maybe the third or fourth time that we've talked about the master plan. Um, and this is part of some of the projects that we're getting is because of the lack of a, of a master plan that sees the city as it is today. Um, so it is on us, but it's also a master plan that we're working from that's not adequate for where we are here today in 2020. Or at least elements. I think there's a lot that's good that we need to highlight. <laughs> and yeah, that's again for another day, not at 1151 at night. Um, Commissioner Sauvet. Just one follow-up question. Did you guys have any difficulty with financing or banks relative to your parking count? Well, to tell you the truth, we've only had preliminary conversations with banks. I mean, that's something that's not, um, you know, it's still a little bit of ways out yet to be able to firm, firm that up. Um, but no, not really. I mean, we've kind of positioned this. I mean, I think John would kind of said it, you know, position this as sort of this quasi urban, you know, neighborhood type of a project that you would just expect to have a little less parking. I mean, you know, we, we've looked at projects downtown with almost no parking. Obviously, you build stuff out in the townships with unbelievable amounts of parking and this is in between. So I, I think just for the project type and the location, it, I mean, I don't, I can't recall it, you know, we've, I mean, we've talked with a few local banks here and um, I don't recall it coming up. You know, I, I mean, I think they kind of got the concept. And that's good for us to know. We have different mm -hmm. conversations and feedback about mm -hmm. that, about when we're seeing more than minimum parking and mm -hmm. that the bank being more or less a scapegoat. So it'd be helpful, you know, the same way we're saying, how do we get more of this and seeing yeah. what you worked on and what you didn't, if you can even, at some yeah, point, I mean, if we were if we were in the Packard corridor like that, I mean, just you know, that just goes a long way. I mean, even if it were a similar infill location in the city, but not quite as aligned from a transit perspective, I think that would it would be a harder conversation to have. Um, you know, even the earlier project gets looked at like off a stadium or something like that. I mean, this is a it's just a straight shot that gets a lot of use from a walking, biking, bike, and bus line stuff. So. It, it, this particular location, I think, sells itself pretty well to that in a way that would be harder, again, even in a similar distance from the core type of area might not might not work quite as well. Thanks. Anything else? I think we are ready to vote, Mr. Leonard. Roll call, please. Commissioner Milstein. Yes. 
Commissioner Gib Randall? Yes. Commissioner Silve? Yes. Commissioner Abrams? Yes. Commissioner Hammerschmidt? Yes. Commissioner Dish? Yes. Commissioner Mills? Yes. Carries unanimously. Thank you. Thank you. Good luck so at City Council. Appreciate <laughs> it. Thanks for sticking with us uh, for the last four hours. I, Council Member Dish got a heck of a first uh, first planning commission. Yeah. <laughs> Yep. Light agenda last night. So we want <laughs> So she's feeling refreshed. Yeah. <laughs> Not refreshed, <Yeah>. but <laughs> comparatively. Yeah. <laughs> comparatively. All right. Everybody really nice to work with. Thank you. Um, we are on to item number 10, which is on our final opportunity for public comment. This is an opportunity for persons to speak for up to three minutes about any item of interest. Public comment can be made by calling 877-853-5247 and then entering meeting ID 978-3155-2451. City staff will call on people who have digitally raised their hand by pressing star nine. Um, you'll be called upon using the last three digits of your telephone number. Um, you'll hear an automated announcement that the host is asking you to speak. Please move to a quiet area, mute any background sound. I am killing the time a little bit because there is that delay that we heard when somebody called in earlier. So in case somebody does want to call on the phone, giving them the time, because right now there's no callers, but we know that there's a delay. I see no one. Okay, great. If somebody calls in, maybe we can come back. So 11 is commission proposed business. It is late, but I do have something. <laughs> Commissioner Milstein first though, and then Commissioner Abrams. There is a run on commissioner proposed business. This is exciting. Um, I think Commissioner Mills, you and I have the same thing, <clears throat> excuse me, um, that we should just clear up this uh, storage facility language like ASAP. Um, and I'm thinking like maybe even bring it up next at our, well, at our next working session and then, you know, let's, let's get it moving fairly quickly. Um, cause I think we received a lot of feedback about that. So instead of being a permitted use, being a, um, uh, what do you call it? Special exception night. use. Yeah, exactly. Thank you. Changing those two E's in the, this is a friendly amendment in the C2B and the C3 districts from those two P's turning them into E's. Yes. Keeping the P's in the manufacturing districts. Yeah. Mr. Lerner, can we just make a motion like that and just take care of it right now? I'm kidding. I'm totally kidding. <laughs> um, I was going to say, you've already adopted a two-year work plan, so this will be year three. If it I mean, takes can... me writing it up. And we can probably take an extra 30 minutes at our next working session. I happy to put it on your next, next working session. Thank you. I, I would suggest that maybe a, we look at those districts broadly for permitted uses. Um, I think the easiest would be to just really focus on those districts, the, the range of permitted uses and any, any consideration of modification is sort of narrowly tailored in that way. Commissioner Abrams. Um, I know it's late, but I just wanted to bring up um, notification because I think it comes up every single time we meet that there are people in the community who feel that they weren't notified or they were told they would be notified and they didn't receive an email or they didn't receive notification. And I know we've, I know we've kind of rehearsed the procedure in the past, but I would like to see that at some point be a topic of discussion for us to revisit the, the protocol. Um, and actually, as I'm saying that, I'm not even sure it's in our purview to change it, but or to recommend that we change it. But it seems uh, like um, uh, a hiccup in this process that is preventing an adequate amount of public participation. It's actually already on our work plan. 
for the next two years. Like, so maybe what I'm proposing is we bump it up a little because I think it's like in the third table, right, <laughs> or something. It's buried in there, I think, a bit. No, no, we we pull it up, so it's we it's didn't. definitely it's definitely oh, okay. risen. Great. I think Commissioner Sove kind of resurrected that one. Said, "Can't we deal with that?" All right. Um, Can I just add one? Commissioner Sove. Really not much, but I don't. It, it seems like a wormhole of like the R four C underground parking height thing, like. I don't, it almost sounds like a Scribner's error to just like copy and paste. I don't know how easy it is, or again, like if it opens up a big wormhole of attacking R4C. But I'd like to just see if it's, if there's some simple modifications to align it with the rest of it. Can you remind us, Mr. Leonard, if R4C, R2A were on, made it to our two year work plan? They did not. Oh, now, you know, um, yeah, so let me, uh, as expressed, I think R4C was the subjects of sort of a more dedicated endeavor. Um, it also functions quite differently in our community than a lot of our other R4 districts. That is, a lot of our other R4 districts are really larger multifamily um, suited where R4C is very much aligned with more traditional pattern of convert, converting housing, like old turn of the century housing often into multifamily. Um, so they do function quite differently, but let me understand a little bit more about that. Um, um, I am ha I'm happy to support whatever ever we go, but um, just keep in mind, we've got transit, got ADUs. Um, we're gonna start some master plan conversation um site plan review um so just I, I would just ask that you keep these brainstorming ideas come but i'm going to need your help to continue to help prioritize how you want to tackle these things um because you won't be able to do them all at once yeah and i that's kind of like i want to note it but i don't want to elevate it because we're seeing this and I think Commissioner Abrams kind of brought it up again like the six bedroom units mm -hmm. and I think that's the bigger lift of figuring out that modification but there are kind of maybe some tweaks that can come along earlier. And I please to be clear these are great this is how we form our work plan you know I this is a great opportunity at the end even late at the end of the night to think about some of the issues that you're facing and then when they're presented and reflected back to you, it's an opportunity to see where there's some alignment. And that's a good way for us to figure out how to prioritize things. Thank you. Commissioner Mastin. Uh, I move to adjourn. Seconded by Commissioner Gib Randall. All in favor? Yes. Uh, that's a lot of hands. Have a great night, folks. Bye, it's already you. Wednesday. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.